What's up? Welcome to your favorite podcast, The Ain't Shit Show, the home of booze, views, and unpopular opinions. I want to thank y'all for joining us for episode 140. Yeah, 140. My name is Fresh, and I'm one half of the pod guys. And with me, I got the best man in all the podcast land, my right hand man, Mr. B. Hey. Hola, hola, A. Hey. Fuck us up. Hope y'all doing all right. B. Greetings. Greetings. It's been a minute. How, how are you? Life's good. How about you? Oh, it's, my life is good. My life is good. I, I I can't complain. Um, Happy birthday to my, or happy belated birthday to my brother. His birthday was last week. Oh, yeah. One time for buddy. I got to meet Clay. Clay, my friend in my mind. I always I tell like, him that. I was like. I think I like, I, li- I think I like him more than you. And that's fine. Not really. No, I'm just I'm just like, <laughs> that's nah, fine. He seems like he's my friend though. Like he'd be like the version of you that like you know what I'm saying, like the male version of you and shit type shit. But wow, yeah. that shit would be dope. That's yeah. Day. Happy birthday, Clay. I think y'all are share a lot of uh comedy in in in, in common. Y'all are y'all yeah. are like that. I, I told my brother you got a boy crush on him. Say what? I told nah, him you got a boy not. crush on him. Yeah, well, that's not true. So. You do have a boy crush. That's like <laughs> nah, a girl crush. Like you just want to be friends with somebody. You yeah, do have a boy crush on my brother, bro. Nah, I just said that nigga seemed cool. Like that's not a boy. That's not a crush. Like that's not. A, that's not you. You just say I want to be friends with him. It, it's not sexual at all. It's it's not. I know, but it's not a sexual thing. Like, at crush all. for me is just wild. Like it just insinuates like some type of like you know longing I mean? like, to be around someone. Yes. Yeah, nah. Long, yes. That's an exaggeration. Like, it's not that I'm long. <laughs> uh, like, wanting to like, be around cool. someone? Yeah, I mean, I don't What would you call it then? What would you call just, it? Just, I mean, he seemed like a cool nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I mean, it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Like, I'm not, like, oh, man, like, I can't wait to be that nigga. Like, hell nah, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on, I ain't say you, you had a, a I know, boner just, for him. I just yeah, said, you, just you like, always say, ooh, I like your brother. Ooh, me, I feel like me and your brother could be friends. Like, I just, I yeah, feel like I it's know. a boy crush. This seems weird. But <laughs> nah, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> One time for Clay. Uh, well, you know, I don't know what Clay will ever be in, in your area, but you know, definitely if you go to DC, I'm sure I can, uh, hook y'all up for some fun. Or whatever y'all want to do, he'll probably take yeah, you I somewhere. Yeah, I wouldn't do that without you though. Like, I mean, like you are the tie that binds. Like, you're my right. friend. Like, I'm not gonna be like, like, yo, what up, bro? I'm in the city. Like, <laughs> that's, that's super weird. Like, what the fuck? Like, nigga, I'm like, I don't know this nigga. This my my sister homeboy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'd be like, I ain't gonna just call the nigga out the blue. Like, and like, yo, I'm trying to meet you, bro. Like, what the fuck? You know yeah. what? Listen. My friends, myself, others have done it. You know, we we will hook people up with cool people all the time. Like, yo, listen, I got a homegirl that live in San Francisco. Like, I think y'all will be cool. Like, she cool. She could take you out around there. You know, whatever, whatever. All right. I baby. mean, I guess like that. Yeah, I guess. But like, I don't know. It just, girls can do shit like that. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I guess I would, but I, ain't, I guess I never thought about <laughs> you it. Gotta, like, you gotta, you gotta let go of your masculinity nigga, for a good time. Out, like, boom, like, boom, I see bro out. Like, yo, I seen, like, we had goddamn, what's the shit? What's the, where they got the smoke, the chili smoke? A um, <laughs> chip Ben chili bowl. <laughs> yeah, we had the shit. They got the bar though. The bar popping though. The bar popping. I don't like, you know eat Ben's chili bowls. I don't. No, know. it's a bar though. Like, it's a Ben's chili bowl. Well, I don't know if they still have it, but back in the day, they had a Ben's chili bowl shit. That shit, I didn't enjoy the food, but then they had a bar. Like, it's called Ben, Ben's at night or some shit. I no, I've never know. heard of that my entire life. So I don't Word? know about that. I don't eat yeah. at Ben's. I don't know anybody no, who eats you, it's there. Like, it's like they have a, it's like a, like a upscale like little bar and lounge type shit like it's literally like two two doors down i do know it is it's 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 a it's a bar next door but never anything i recall that says ben's bar or anything like that there is a bar next to it though it's a couple bars next to it now that shit was ben's like it was like that they made it a point to say it was ben's like because you go in i remember because it was the first time i went into ben's chili bowl and then i was like all right food's underwhelming but 
Then I went, like, they were like, well, we got parties and shit, da da da. Like, dude, you know how niggas be hustling. He's like, I'm having a party at Ben's. Like, they got a bar right beside. I was like, well, fuck it, I'll go out there and that shit was jumping. It was right on U Street. Shit was right beside it, I guess, like two, two or three doors down. Uh, it was a whole, I, whole restaurant. That shit was live. It says Ben's next door. So that must yeah, be I, what you're talking about. Let me see yeah, what it looked like exactly on the outside. Which restaurant like is Oh, they got some shit in the back. Yeah, that shit was fly. It was like some <laughs> some that shit was fly. It was like long but but like narrow and shit. Like the bar was right by the damn <laughs> by the back. Like in a, shit, like but... the alley shit. I've never was... seen this shit, bro. That's crazy. I mean, that not that I be too. down there all the time anyway. Like I don't yeah, live there true. no more. So I mean, but I I've yeah. been through there in the past. Oh, that shit was jumping though. Three months. Was, that shit was this, this shit was well over fucking at least ten years ago. But the shit was jumping though, like because I remember like because I had my old lady with me and her, two of her homegirls and shit, and that shit was like, I was like God damn, this shit fly. It was nice, but it was narrow as fuck. Like I, you know what I'm saying? But it won't like on no hood shit. But it was mad like yeah. fucking Nike boots and, and dreads and Washington hats and shit. Like uh, that. So it looked like the people who lived there. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay, like okay, that 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 sounds that sounds yeah, about right. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask. Uh, I'm going to ask my friend who still lives in that area. I'm going to ask her, has she mm. ever been to it? Because she don't have no car, so I know she been to everything. I don't need a she car been that to, She been to everything out there. Yes, the fuck you do need a car. If you can live you? there, you need a fucking car. Like You can get on the metro, though. Can't you? Like, you can't. The metro don't take you everywhere? Uh, yeah, the metro takes you everywhere. And D.C. definitely from has a, a, well, used to. I've been hearing things about it, but used to have a very uh, good public transportation system. Um, the prices have gone up extremely, so I hear. I've also heard uh, of extreme violence going on, so people don't like to ride them anymore, um, I, and shit like that going on. So actually, you know, the people that I, I mean, when she travels, she'll take public transportation, but most of the people I know don't even live in that part of the city. No more. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Where you just get into the good quick transportation or whatever but i feel like if you live somewhere shit you need to be able to go when you feel like going you know what oh, I'm, no, saying? I, I'm from the i've had a car since i was fucking 14 old, right so y'all be yeah, getting cars off bucks off the rip yeah y'all right, be getting so bu- not, cars off that's bucks. not having a car is super foreign but i understand like how people live in the city like me personally i would definitely have a whip but like I understand, like, you know, like, you, the running joke about New Yorkers is they don't know how to drive. Like, niggas be 70. Yeah. And never driven a car and shit. You know what I mean? So I, but it's, it's so many different ways of moving around and shit. But like, living here or living, you know, southern parts or I don't, I, I would imagine, you know, any non metropolis area, you definitely need a, a, a vehicle for sure. Hey, shit, you need a fucking vehicle in Atlanta. They public transportation is, it's going a circle. Yeah, the modern. Yeah, shit, that right? shit just going like a circle in the middle of the city. Like it don't even go yeah. nowhere. So you gotta ride to the martyr, get out just to get to your job. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's... fucking maybe ten minutes away from the martyr. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, where my friend lives as well, because uh, she grew up, she in the same area we grew up in. Like she in the gentrified area, but she was able to maintain a uh or secure an apartment over there i still don't even know how she afford to live over there like she live in the same apartments that would have been the dc version of like the wire or some shit like she live in clifton mm. Terrace. shout out to ctu man right ne- right next to condoza um i heard of condoza what's that my high school oh, okay that's why i heard it from yeah me. but you sure condoza is the area too which yes. they are trying to change that whole area to be columbia heights that's trash. Columbia Heights was up further by like Adams Morgan and all that shit. So Adams Morgan is a wild place. Yeah, they trying to make that whole area Columbia Heights where it was um U Street Cadoza area. Like mm-hmm. that whole area. That's where I grew up at. But they trying to they trying to change all of that. But where, where my friend live at, there's literally like no fucking parking. It's a million fucking apartments in Clifton Terrace. If y'all know where Clifton Terrace at, y'all know Clifton Terrace is a huge apartment complex or building or whatever you want to call this probably like three or four buildings on that block but it ain't no parking like none like none and i'm just like i don't see how you do that shit i've been telling her to move i was like do you really need to stay in the city now like is it necessary it's overpriced ain't nowhere to park you didn't grew up there ain't no yeah you know all of the 
I can the see allure it. is gone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect word. Perfect word. Sure. All the allure is gone. I'm just like, you need to move. But she definitely one of those, um, she one of those people who are very settled <laughs> in their ways mm-hmm. and shit, you know, right. even if it don't serve them no more, you know, like yeah. it used to. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think she's, part, she likes the part of it that she's one of the few people that actually lives in like Northwest DC. Right. I, I mean, I, you know, out of the, out of the crew or out of the people she know, like everybody else be moving this shit. That shit be expensive. But I know that shit's stupid. That shit probably like what twenty five hundred for fucking two bedroom or some stupid shit. Awesome, like that. awesome shit that ain't even yeah. popping like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it. they've renovated and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But still, like yeah, nigga, that shit still it ain't worth that. Square feet. Yeah, big facts. Yeah, and she got a two bedroom, but her joint still like the setup is small. All that. It, it it it's just crazy, but it is one of the things that I do love about the city from a construction standpoint. I love seeing like them build like big ass structures and little ass spaces. Nigga over there by uh, Uzanaz and shit. Yeah, like when I went up that that they nigga they built like this shit was like a whole school or some shit over there. I'm like, bro, and then they built like these pretty ass fucking buildings. I'm like, this shit is super fucking congested. Like it's literally no space. Like it's that's why I say Earth is so like Earth is so important to own because Bruh. like that's that's what that is. On top of that, on on the bottom of that is some fucking Earth. Like and somebody own that shit. The government own it. All that the gov you you don't own none of your land in DC. The government owns Word? you owns none of it. Jeez. You play and, nice. <laughs> and that's why you don't have property tax. So that's your Airbnb? Huh? So it's like Airbnb. What you mean? <laughs> the fucking the government is getting Airbnb money, like eventually, like they're just charging you to rent there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was just so like when people so want to buy, buy houses in DC, it ain't no point because you don't own the land. That's why the whole thing about DC and representation, uh, you know, uh representation in the Senate and shit like no that. Taxation. No, yeah, taxation no taxation without representation and yeah. them trying to become a state and obtain all of these privileges like everyone else. Like DC has over 750 people living in that, in that 10 square miles. You know what I'm saying? DC mm-hmm. is really small for real, for real. Like super it's small. super small. None yeah. of the land is all of the land is owned by the government. If the government at any no, point in time want that. to build some shit where your shit is, they will cut you a check and you will take whatever they give you and they will fucking <laughs> build wow. what the fuck they want at any point in time. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? If your grandmama owned it since 1935, like they going to take that shit if they want to. That's crazy. Cause like, I know like I had a great aunt that stayed in DC, like, um, in Southeast, I think, but like they lived there forever. Mm-hmm. Like when, like she, she lived to be like a hunt. Like she died a couple days after she turned a hundred and shit. But, I wonder what the, I'm gonna ask my mom about their land. I mean, she they had a daughter and shit, so I guess she got it. But I wonder what the fuck. That's crazy. I, did, I mean, I you mean, can still own the house, but yeah. you just don't own the land that it's on. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. But I mean, it makes sense, obviously, because it's no taxation. Yeah. There's no state taxes yeah. and shit, and property taxes. So how do? So what do they kill you with? Like, how do you? I guess with. Oh shit! It's still expensive municipal- as fuck though. <laughs> But I mean, like in terms of government, like you just pay the federal government then for everything. It's just no state tax, I would imagine. So when you get paid, it's just federal government tax. Right? Um, that is a good question. I don't. I would imagine so. You you can't pay the state, yeah, unless DC I'm, takes some. I'm assuming so. I can't remember my paychecks from back in the day. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, that that would seem about right. I mean, yeah, DC no definitely has a bunch of taxes that you pay mm-hmm. that's described as other shit and yeah, put into sure. other shit and you know like. So, like, when I moved to North Carolina, like, what I learned about North Carolina is that they fucking nickel and dime you to death. Like, shit be seeming low, but it's a bunch of, like, 15 different low costs. It might be $25 here, $50 here, you know what I'm saying? Right. $75 over here. So, like, when I came to North Carolina, I eventually had to change over my tax after shit. Being there for, like, six, seven years, I finally had mm-hmm. to change over my tags and shit. And, like, in D.C., like, tags gonna cost you and this was back in the day. Like, and I know it's more now. Tax was going to cost you like 250 mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where in North Carolina, it might be $25. But they didn't charge you tag, property yeah, tax. They didn't charge you. They charge the property tax. They charge you all these other things. Registration exactly. For the registration fee, the inspection fee. Yep. All this. Y'all got, I wonder if they got inspection. Yeah, they, they got, got inspection. inspection. It's, it's, it's yeah. inspection. It's not. Again, I'm, I'm just speaking on past, so it could be different. Yeah, uh, but mm-hmm. you didn't have to pay like the inspection fee. 
and shit like that. All that was included in like your tax and you get your oh. tax for two years. Like you can uh-huh. get them for one year or you can get them for two years, but you actually save money by in time by getting them for two years. So sure. that was my other well, problem. Now, yeah. That was my other problem right. moving to North Carolina. Like my tax oh, would yeah. expire and I get now. pulled over every time. Like, did you know your tax expire? I'm like, damn, I just, I just renewed yeah, them hoes. Like, I gotta do my shit. Um, I gotta pay my taxes and I got two cars at the same time. One is in April and one is in May. That shit is trash. Yeah. Cause May's you- a super expensive month. Mm, yeah. They get you. Mad shit. They- mad. I got mad shit in May. My white birthday. My two, like two of my best friends' birthday. And when your wife's birthday? Son's birthday, the twentieth. The twentieth. Um, she, yeah, she's still a tourist. Gotcha. My mom's birthday, Mother's Day, my nephew' birthday, God baby birthday, um, taxes and tags and mm-hmm. shit. Like that shit is trash. It's like December twice, like <laughs> December part two. Like that shit is trash. And, and no, you, you, you right. So this starts off. My brother' birthday starts off. Uh, well, actually, my father's birthday. My father's birthday and my brother's birthday is two days apart. But rest in peace to my dad. Uh, my dad' birthday sure. will start off birthday season, so like in the next six weeks, all of us will have a birthday. Like me That's and my crazy. siblings, like we will all have a birthday in the next six weeks, which is crazy because I feel like I just had a birthday and I did not get to maximize my year. I keep telling y'all I want my year back. <laughs> like I feel like I should be able to live yeah, out that you year. Live. You sur- you survived. That like, is true. Was, like fuck that. You definitely maximized. You survived. Unscathed. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Nah, I, I, <laughs> I definitely appreciate pandemic, that. Man. I still fuck feel like that. I got one in the hole though. I mean I feel you I feel like I, I went like, it, it went so fast and it was like a blur and it was just so It like, was fast it, it and, was, and long at the same time. Pause. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, it was like <laughs> It was repetitious as fuck. Mm. Like it was super, it was like Groundhog Day. Like yes. you ever seen the movie Groundhog Day? That shit was Groundhog fucking day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like with the exception of maybe one or two moves here and there, but for the for the most part, that shit was the exact exact same day for the fucking for a year. You know what I mean? For what it's worth. Yeah. Like so fuck but despite all that, nigga made it through, boy. Motherfuckers fucked up. Yeah. Plenty of niggas died. Yeah. People definitely died and you know, it's it's actually speaking of that, yeah, rest in peace to over 600,000 people people who are no longer with us. Um, You know what's crazy, though? So, (laughs) so again, shout out to my brother. My brother was having, like, this outside gathering for his birthday. Um, The forecast said that it was going to rain. Um, It was clear. It wasn't even, like, on no 50% shit. It was, like, 90%, (laughs) Mm. 100% that it's going to rain. We tried to talk my brother into kind of changing like his setup and you know inviting less people and moving it inside of his house um or moving it up further in the day so it was on saturday um it's supposed to start at six it's supposed to start raining at six uh, i told my brother i'm like look once you do this i'm just like once you move it up from like 12 or 1 to 6 and then you can have your after party elsewhere if you want to you know or you know, once you change the, change the amount of people that you have coming, you know, take it down to like 10, 15 of your closest. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, he has a, he has a empty garage. He has a, a good downstairs area. Um, and, you know, I do know for a fact that like a, half of his friends are vaccinated or the main ones because of the type of job that they do. So they're vaccinated. So we're trying to tell him he still want to have his party here, nigga. He don't listen, right? So he gets like these tents and shit, right? He gets like these tents and shit. And he sets up this whole, we help him. I help him. I'm your sister. I'll help you. Even though I feel like you might need to change this. He set up, uh, we had some tents. He set it all up on the um driveway. <laughs> like he set all this oh, shit yeah. up on the driveway. And when I tell you at six on the dot, it started fucking raining, my nigga. Shout out to the right. meteorologist. It, it started right. raining. Uh, my brother set up and then left at six, didn't come back to eight 30. It's your party, my nigga. Like it's your party. So these like, yo people, like I noticed that my brother, like the way that I am about like some of my high school friends and, uh, and, and my college friends, like those are my people. And I realized that like the people we grew up with is my brother's version of his college friends or like his high school friends. Cause he didn't 
complete high Same. school either, right? right? So these are like his people. So he is in communication with people like that we grew up with that I'm not necessarily friends with. I know you, I can yeah. speak to you, but we're not friends. I don't communicate with you. So one, it's right. hard trying to fucking entertain other people company. So I'll cuss yeah, about about sure. that. But when I tell you it rained the whole, whole fucking time and them niggas. Niggas had good sneakers on too. Exactly. And what you had on? they had, um, at first I had on some Vapor Max and then I changed into some phone posits. <laughs> had to get something that could sustain. Sound like a, a nice rain. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You <laughs> can't fuck up a phone posit, that. man. That's super funny. I asked you that. Like, that's super funny. Go ahead. <laughs> I had on, I had on my phone posits, but I told my brother. Cause the vapors would have kicked your fucking foot song would have been crazy. Well, I was on the concrete and I was under the tent. So my move was. Under the tent to inside the house. So my mom, the way my mom's crib is set up, she has a whole functional downstairs with a full mm-hmm. kitchen and all that shit. So we kind of had that space open, but not yeah. the upstairs space um, and the downstairs. So that was cool. But I told my brother, I said, look, I want you to look around at the people who still here and still rocking because these are your motherfucking people. These are the people that fuck with you that is willing to right. party till three in the morning in the rain. Yeah. Now the tents covered it a little bit, but niggas was still getting wet. Niggas still had yeah, a good yeah. time though. You know, people, you know, that's what again, I, that's the thing I love about black people. We gonna we gonna make something out of nothing, even though I felt like that oh, yeah. shit should have been changed. But going get wrapping this back around to the reason I brought this up is it is very interesting, especially in these last couple of weeks, dealing with a world of vaccinated people. Oh, nigga, yeah, niggas is wide open. Nigga. So it, it gave me like a little bit of anxiety because even though we were outside and shit like that, like I still had like had my mask on and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Then you got motherfuckers that's drunk and that's all close and getting up in your face. Oh yeah, and- now the, ma- the mask goes away when it's drunk time. Yeah. It. That the, the mask goes away. And I, was, I had like anxiety. I feel like I had more anxiety not knowing who vaccinated and who just in my fucking space versus yeah. when I knew everybody could be a culprit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So then mm-hmm. you, you got people that's low key offended. Like, nigga, I'm vaccinated. Da, 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 da. Nigga, it ain't about you. It's about me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel it's still a pandemic. It's still a pandemic. Like, just you're vaccinated to me don't mean that you're immune to getting the shit, my nigga. Like, right. And they don't know enough information to know if you can get it and I had no system to still spread that shit. For real. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You sure. might not die from it, but you can still have that shit. And I was just yeah, like, it's just weird. It's weird. Have you been around the, the, the non-vaccinated crowd? Nah, I don't really be doing shit. Like, I be at the crib. So, nah, not really. I ain't, I only, I know, I was just funny. I was just talking about that because I'm going to Puerto Rico in a couple uh-huh. weeks. Um, and apparently that shit is like Miami. Yeah. Because everybody in the fucking world is in fucking Puerto Rico, yep. which pisses me the fuck off. I'm like, God damn, like, everybody's in fuck. My man just came back. He said he seen like three niggas from, <laughs> from Raleigh. I'm like, God damn. Puerto Rico like, like, and, right. and Tulum? Tulum? Yeah. What right. is it? Tulum or Tulum? Puerto Rico. No, it's Tulum. Tulum. But everybody, Puerto yeah, Rico, it's Tulum. So everybody there. Yeah. But you don't even need no passport to go to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Like, Tulum, you need a passport for. So, like, everybody going to Puerto Rico. You know what I mean? Like, so that shit. Like, all the excursions are sold out, nigga. Like, for real? I'm fucking, I, nigga, I'm super disappointed that I'm finna go here. Yeah. But I'm gonna make the best of it because it's still, like, Puerto Rico and I've never been. But, like, they shit, like, they got a curfew at nine. Damn. Shit, like, word. Damn. <laughs> word. Nigga, word, bro. Like they sat down at like nine thirty, ten o'clock. Like I'm like, damn. And then like the pool shut down, all that shit. Like so, all he got is like kind of like the hotel lobby type deal. And then two, goddamn, um, like fucking all the excursions are sold out. Everything at fifty percent capacity and shit. Mm. So like, but a couple of my people. The reason I said all that is that you have to prove when you get to the airport, like that you had a COVID, right. either a COVID shot or you know you've been you had a COVID test within you know the next three that's, days. I think it's twenty four hours or some shit or forty. Well, they might change it, but it's definitely th- it was three days when I went to Jamaica. Yeah, it was yeah, ten, think, and then right before we went, they changed it to three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so that, and then. Like a couple of my people was vaccinated, but majority of the people that I'm going with ain't vaccinated mm-hmm. that I know of. I only know one for sh- two, two for sure. I know a couple of niggas that had COVID and shit, but like recently, so they somewhat, you know what I mean, got the immunity type shit. So yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to Port Vallarta for my birthday. Oh, nice. And um, that should be good. You don't need a COVID test to get in, but you need a COVID test to get back. 
Oh yeah, coming from yeah, coming from another yeah. country. Yeah, you need a COVID test well. um to come back. But did you hear about um? Did you hear about the nigga uh, that got killed in Puerto Rico for taking pictures? Mm-hmm. That's what I we, I said in the group chat. Like, all right, well, I'm bringing some bud with me, so we don't <laughs> have to worry about going to find no bud. Cause I don't. How? Smoke How are you nigga doing Nigga beat this? the nigga, beat one nigga with a, a weight, and then burn the other nigga up. Hell, that no. is insane. Just for some weed, and there ain't no gas. There ain't no fire. That good. Fuck that. that. Facts. I'll just be drunk. What's the, what's the, what's then they had a shortage of liquor. They said they had, they got a shortage of fucking liquor. Nah, we uh, definitely can't go fun. there. I'm sober the whole Nigga, time. I'm not, I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, like they, they said that my man said they sell, sold out of Hennessy on Friday. I'm like, what the fuck? There has been a like, Hennessy shortage in places though. Yeah. Niggas is drinking the Hennessy. All these stimmy. Niggas buying man. Hennessy like, by the truckload. Niggas buying Hennessy by the truckload. That shit, crazy. <laughs> that shit is crazy I- but like cause cause you know I, a part of my job is um like my, the the job I have like we write, we're an insurance company so we write cannabis and like bro mm-hmm. like it's so much money like being made on can't like it cause they're they were deemed essential businesses so they and you know people cope so that shit man when the fucking George Floyd riots hit and shit man these niggas sending in like invoices and 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 calculations for what they lost and what was stolen and shit. A lot of that shit won't cover, but the things that like you know the way they evaluated that shit, man, that shit was like two point three million mm. in product and shit stole. I'm like, mm. yo, what the fuck? Like mm. niggas is making the killing off bud. Like niggas making millions and millions of dollars off bud. Right. And I need in. You know that? I need in. I love to. My uh, um, I love one of my um, one of my homeboys uh has gotten into the weed business um but on a dealer level but he goes he he goes directly to like cali to like get the shit right and Mm -hmm. like he goes like literally to this farm to Mm -hmm. get his shit right so his his price is like dumb cheap right so pure gas he, he he's telling me like yeah, you know, for what for what I'm selling this to you for, like, really, you could still sell it yourself and make money. And I was just, that shit hit me for a second. I was like, damn, that is true. Like, I could definitely sell this shit and make money, even if he didn't, even if he just sold it to me at the regular price he was selling it to me for. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, yo, why, why am I, like, I'm just not built for jail, B. Like, I'm just not built for it. jail. But I be I wanting it. to so fucking bad. I feel like we well, is we fucking gonna, harmless. We're not incriminating, not, we're not incriminating ourselves. So this isn't the event that you by chance do some shit right <laughs> in life. This isn't come up. But we can talk about mine. And I can give you some points from people that I know in the event that you decide. You know, I, you know decide. we can still talk about it offline. We definitely can. It's probably going to be, you know, eight times out of ten a no for me because I'm just that you know, not prepared to go to jail. But, uh, the only thing I'll say is if you have it in your house already and it's just sitting there, but it's not a distributable amount. It's a personal yeah, amount. I mean, you know, <laughs> but personal. Can be, and, and we it, just decriminalized it. in Georgia. So I'm not worried about if Oh you, shit, nigga, you lit. <laughs> listen, but that's oh, if yeah, you have lie. X amount of ounces on you. Like if I, I need mean, distributable really amount of weed, it. I feel like that's going to break the, the boundary Slow there. Up, man. I'll talk to okay. you. Okay. That shit. Okay. <laughs> listen, and here's the other hey, thing, right? So sneaker money and shit like that. I'm telling. You. Listen, but listen. okay. So here's the thing, right? I always evaluate shit like, am I taking penitentiary chances for some shit I can make on my own in a legal way, right? And when we talking about like extra money, I, I ain't doing it if it's just for some sneaker money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like if I can match five hundred dollars and shit, I, I ain't doing way, shit but. for an extra five hundred dollars, bro. If I did that, I it's, would have to make a minimum of seven thousand dollars in a month. Oh shit. Oh, well, you trying to get, well, you just, yeah, you trying to sell weight. Like you ain't fucking doing that. Like, yeah, I'm definitely, trying, I'm not about you said to seven thousand dollars a month. Yes. In order for oh, me yeah. to do something illegal, I got to make that much money. <laughs> this nigga said, all right, well, shit, I'm not doing nothing unless I'm going <laughs> getting 
five to ten. Facts. Like, Facts. <laughs> that, okay. Listen, I can get I that on my own. Like, I can get $500. I can get $2,000. Like, that's not worth, that's not a worth month, the risk for me. Every month? Yeah. Huh? I can give my money I mean, to was, another nigga that sell weed and give him the upfront money and have him pay, give it back to yeah, me. Like, that that's, that's a little bit of money. That ain't, $500 ain't worth it, bro. Five hundred dollars just is not worth. You talking about a month? Yeah, why not? Hell no, that's some bullshit. If you ain't doing nothing, if you literally aren't doing anything, it's it's like I've never had too much money, so I'll just put it to you like that. But like, yeah, if you could do that shit hands free and and goddamn like and come on the thirtieth or some shit or by like every other week, you getting two fifty like that shit. That's money. I don't, and you ain't doing nothing. Like that's literally not doing anything besides like. We'll talk about that shit all the Right. Because then, uh, look, I, I get a charge or something, lose my fucking job yeah. for fucking $500 a month. Hell no. $500 no. a month ain't even worth my time. It depends on what you, how, what your time is, though. My $500 like, ain't worth my time. Even if, like, niggas cash app. You don't even... <laughs> you, that's the thing. I mean, but everything Man, is still a trail. Everything now. is still a trail. I'm just saying, like, for the risk of doing something illegal for $500, that ain't even worth it. You know what I mean? Like... I mean, I feel you. That ain't like, worth it. That ain't worth it. I'm just, me. I mean, cause I wouldn't do that either, but at the same <laughs> time, like, if I can make an extra little 500, nah. like, and literally not doing nothing, shit. I can have somebody give me 500. Nice. Just hey, for mom. being me. Hell yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's a trap too, man. It ain't illegal though. It's called prostitution. It ain't illegal though. Prostitution. I mean, it's mutually beneficial. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's mutually beneficial. Yeah, you sell a little butt. <laughs> hey, we all selling butt. You know? We all selling butt, ass, mouth. Teeth, we selling everything out here, <laughs> like, but it ain't illegal. I think say I want to do. I want to. I got to make seven. I got to make seven thousand dollars. I got to make a if, paycheck. If, if worth. everything that trap made seven thousand dollars, we be out of here. Niggas ain't making. And half these niggas, niggas ain't even smart. Like I feel like the weed men be the dumbest motherfuckers out here. Like nigga, you need this money, don't you? Like show up. Where you at? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they be high. Bruh, they be the worst. They be the worst, except for except for my one guy. We call him Chip Fil A. I call that nigga Chip Fil A, bro. That nigga comes through with the customer service, and yeah. as long as I can support that nigga, I will. Cause he got shit to lose. You know what I'm saying? Support your local drug dealer. And, the one, the good ones. Bruh, good. He he I, dope. I know some bad ones, and I know some good ones too. Well, I don't deal with a lot of drug dealers, but <laughs> I mean, like in just in life in general, like I've met a lot of bad, like that take forever to do shit. And goddamn, don't be good what they were, geese, some bullshit, all that shit. I just started Hustling buying my own boy. weed. Hustling this trash since I since oh, I moved here. I just started buying my own. I never bought weed before. I I actually didn't even start like smoking on a regular basis to like two three years before I moved down this joint. Oh, well. Yeah, I, I, it, so I never I bought weed. weed. I never did none of that. And then when I moved down this joint, I was like, shit, now I guess I got to buy my own weed, buy my own connection. And then still, mm -hmm. still up until probably like last year, keeping it a band, I was, I was still just go through somebody else who already had a weed, man. Like, yo, just get me this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you yeah, go get your sure. shit. Cause I never wanted yeah. to even like be in the mix. So that, that should give you, uh, insight yeah, on how yeah, apprehensive yeah, I am, like to do some hand to hand shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And me now, if yeah, I buy I some weed, I'm buying enough so I don't have to come see you for another month or two. I ain't, I'm not oh, yeah. about to buy no fucking 3.5s and shit like that. Like, that's a waste of my time. Like, I need to get my shit. I don't see y'all be, be nickel and diamond and shit all the time. You got the money. You know you smoke weed. Just buy the yeah. shit. Motherfuckers cheap, though. Motherfuckers are Motherfuckers cheap. still put $10 in. The <laughs> that is thing. true. And they got the with money, a, though. With a st whole stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas definitely putting like twenty bucks in their ass tank, and like they go get the new car, but don't even fill that bitch up. Like you know what I'm saying? Bruh, I know niggas who go get the new car, the new popping foreign car. Don't have gas money. Don't want to pay for the oil change. Like none of that shit. So like when niggas always oil trying insurance. to trying to kick shit to me because you know I've been on this about to buy a car for the past two years and Same. shit. Right? I be looking at cars every day of my life. <laughs> I look at cars and houses every day of my life. But I, I, niggas be trying to get me to buy all this shit. And I'm just like, nigga. For what? You trying to get me to buy this shit, but the car ain't the problem. I mean, the actual car payment ain't the problem. It's the other yeah. shit that go along with these high end cars yeah. and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They insurance. like, yeah, yeah insurance, insurance, everything. Expensive motherfuckers. Ty you gotta buy some tires. 
Like some all that shit. Like Tired. they don't be thinking about yeah. all that shit. They like payment. The payment is just that's the the constant. The other shit is the incidental shit that just happens to Tax. come every quarter. Facts. <laughs> like, you got to pay taxes on that money, and then the taxes on goddamn expensive ass cars. That is very stuff. true. Right. That is that, that is very trash, true. Bro. But people don't think that's that why shit I ain't through. Them. And then I ain't even going nowhere. Like I work from home. I be at the crib. Like. So I, ain't, I don't, I, I don't want to pay for some shit that I ain't even really driving. Like talking about, you know what I'm saying? Bro, I had to buy like, a compressor two weeks ago. I was pissed because I just bought mm-hmm. one three and a half years ago, and my warranty was only for two years. They say a compressor should last you like eight years. I was pissed. How many miles this shit got on? A lot. My car's will be eleven years old this year, and then you know I done yeah. took that shit from fucking Everywhere. Mississippi to Georgia to North Carolina to DC over the past eleven okay. years. Yeah, yeah. She's been good. No, man. shout out. Shout out to my baby Zena. I ain't gonna even come for her like Warrior that. Princess. She yeah, exactly. Warrior Princess. She's black. I had her, you know what I'm saying? I, for, cousin named Zena. I bought her new and she has held it down and you know, all of that shit. But I'm I'm a I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna try to hold off as long as as long as I can because I'm not the person that need a certain type of car for status. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I just want one. I just want one because like, I feel like I've worked hard and I've never owned a luxury car. And I just feel like it's my time to get a luxury car. You should. You deserve I one. I do you deserve one. one. <laughs> but then, again, when I look at that payment, I'll be like, God damn. I wish you'd be at a, I wish you could get a house, but you know, that's another story. Yeah, we already talked about that. And that, that's in, that's, that's, that's in the works. And that, that's my thing too, because both of these things are probably going to happen around the same time. You know what I'm saying? Both of these things are probably going to happen around the same time. So I've just been trying to make sure like all my ducks in the row and shit. And you know, my first house that I want, I want it to be a, a multifamily property. So, Absolutely. you know, that, that's what I'm trying to do. Because at the end of the day, a, as far as like the actual living space, I'm not really tripping. I'm just, I'm just trying to buy a house to go ahead and get that ball rolling so I can, you know, try to get the get get more real estate and like shit like that and kind of learn man, that shit that shit like to everybody in raleigh they got them fucking the apple has just announced that they about to open up a fucking building True. in fucking wake county so like property value is about to nigga property my house like nigga the shit the property around this motherfucker is so ridiculous like it is amazing like how like property is literally gone like it has increased like seventy to eighty thousand during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. No bullshit. Mm-hmm. My house is worth a hundred and some change more than what I would uh, I bought it for. Nice. And I've been here five and a half years. Nice. But it's not nice. It's not nice because even when you try to buy something, that's else, true. Like you're gonna have to spend. Like that's true. That's you know true. what I mean? Because everything true. else that you that was in your price range has also. Increased. That's very true. <laughs> so like where that where that old three hundred thousand where your shit was two, when you bought it and it was two hundred thousand and that that three house that was three hundred thousand which was crazy. Mm-hmm. Now it's four hundred and fifty thousand yeah. or some shit. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Catch so like, on your all, ass. That shit is fucking crazy, man. Like, and then it's no and it's no properties, it's no houses out this motherfucker. Like the the housing market in Wake County and Durham is fucking ridiculous. And now that, that shit is finna come. Like houses is gonna be stuff fucking through the roof. Mm. Like them shits is continually going up. And I read I was listening to a podcast, I think it was Earn Your Leisure. And they were saying, like, if you look at, like, the reason that you, that I stress ownership of property, mm-hmm. they said, if you look in history, like, rent has never gone down. Mm-hmm. Like, you, it, it used to be at one point or another, it was fucking $25 mm-hmm. to live somewhere. And now, it's definitely not $25. So, like, wherever, like, property value, I mean, rent don't go down. It might sustain and stay flat for several years, but it ain't never going to go, like, yeah. the 500 it's yeah. the 600 You know what I'm saying? So going back, uh, going, going, going back to, um, DC, I told you that my, uh, nieces, my niece's grandmother, they had their house. Um, the, the great grandmother owned the house since like the thirties or something like that. And I think they paid right. like $30,000 for that shit. And they sold that shit yeah, for yeah. 1.5. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's that, <laughs> that's that goddamn. That shit, like my home, one of my homeboys and shit, his family, they, um, they owned a bunch of land. Like they had a black farm, like one of the only black farms in like one of the biggest black farms in North Carolina in Holly Springs. They had like 40 acres of land and shit. And, um, they ended up selling that farm for like 40 million. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like 40 million. his mom, yeah, they got like 40 million. And it's like 20, it's like 20. Um, but they ended up buying some more land. So they like bought some more land in Garner and now him and three of his cousins and his uncle that like they split up, they split up like, I think it was 11 acres of land, mm-hmm. like amongst like four or five families mm-hmm. and shit. 
and they like everybody got like two acres and they all in, in downtown gone and they all bought that shit for probably like 10 or 12 million or some shit and now they busting it up you know what i mean <laughs> well they busting up the goddamn the they parceling out the land the 10 to 11 acres so everybody getting like two and a half and some change nice. and he built and they all and they're building their own fucking neighborhood you know what i mean like like real shit. Like that shit is the super most super. That's what I want to do. Ever. I want to build a neighborhood. Like that is my goal. And I and and it's his family. And I and I and I've talked to several people about like buying a block in like Baltimore or Detroit or you know some shit like that because it is a lot of fucking abandoned houses and shit. And I watched this mm-hmm. um show this weekend be. Very quick, because I actually didn't get to watch any t- television in a while, but it was just on. It's called uh, Bargain Bargain Renovations or something like that. It's two guys, and they're they're in Detroit. And I learned about the land bank. Did you know mm. about the land banks? I've heard about it, but I'm not familiar. So basically, it's a land bank. Is exactly how it is, and they they sell like you know uh dilapidated properties and distressed properties and and shit like that Mm. and you buy them for like cheap in order to like renovate and revitalize the area and shit and they was buying houses for a band bro they was buying houses for a band spending like twenty five thousand to fix them up and then you know reselling them shits for like seventy five a hundred yeah, uh, Ye Ye and um Envy got a lot of like they did a lot of that shit. Yeah. They 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 bought a lot of houses in um in Detroit. My my wife's aunt she bought one online for like fucking twelve dollars and shit. But they had, they ended up condemning it because it was like three dead bodies. Oh my god! Yeah, they actually had to take like the land back and shit and do all some type of shit. So she ended up like selling that probably to the land bank for you know pennies on the yeah. dollar and shit just to get out of it because it was like a homicide and all type of other shit and niggas have been in there for mad damn shit. yeah, shit yeah that'd be the thing shit about wild. buying them bandos <laughs> yeah, especially like sure. in them type areas them, that shit be crazy with that shit but if you looking though man like look look in Petersburg look in Richmond and shit like they got houses for the fucking low like investment properties and shit for all those who investors that may if you have any ties or any way to like look in you know petersburg richmond like chesterfield area like they got a lot of houses for the low like multi-family properties and all type of shit so if you uh, um I, remind me to tell you about my my, my tiny house idea okay. <laughs> when we get off i ain't gonna say it on here because y'all niggas be stealing not that everybody can't do it but at least let us start or let me start and then y'all can get in on it. Oh, my hunger is live in a tiny house i could never no way. I could never. Not she even had, by myself. I could never. Was, it was four of them. It was two kids and her husband. She black? And her husband's wife. Mm, okay. I knew it had to be some caucasity in there somewhere. Yeah, for sure. But she's just super eccentric. Like, she's mad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's like a flower. Like, she's like a black hippie type mm, shit. You know okay. What I mean? Like, she's super like. She is wild because she's from South Carolina. She's super geeky and a motherfucker, but she got damn like is a super hippie. Shit is the weirdest fucking. Dynamic did did she want to stay in a tiny house or that that was what they means could afford? They had a farm and they just yeah. I think I don't know. Don't get me the line. It's, it's not. It was dope though. We went out to the farm and shit. I ain't going to house. <laughs> you but, can't like, fit in a house, farm. B. <laughs> It was no electricity. They lived like on the fire. It was like on some Amish oh, shit. Oh, like, hell no. no. electricity and shit. And we was, but it was dope though. Cause like we was just cooking on the fire and shit. Like they had like a fire pit. Yeah. And camping had, like, is fun. Name. Living out there. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was cool to visit. Right. That's what I'm saying. saying. Like, I, I, like nah, yeah, that I was need, a cool I experience. Need. Now let me go home to my king size yeah, it was bed. Dope, <laughs> for sure. That's a fact. That shit, yeah, that shit was like a damn shoebox for real. That's crazy. I'll be watching like the tiny house shit and they be having like some cool shits. Uh, I want a container house. Container house. Yes. Dope. Yes. That's an option too. Shit dope. That is I'm shit super that, dope. that 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 is an option too. Not for me to live in, but for, for I could my- like them, I done seen some fly shit. Like I done seen container mansions and shit. Like them shit nigga be paying like two fifty for them bitches, them bitches and like buy the land and shit. Yeah. Play like two fifty for the the shit, man. I always wanna know like shit. what happens like when it's raining or it's storming and shit. And it's hitting up against what this metal. I guess they got put in a lot of uh, soundproofing. I mean, it's, got, it's got it's got roofs and shit. What you yeah, mean? but it's still metal. Like, like you still in a can at the end of the day. Rain and shit hit that yeah. shit. Sound like it hit when it hits your car. Yeah, I mean, if it's storming, I guess. you know what I'm saying. The hailing, all that shit. It sounds like it's noisy because of metal. And 
No, nah, they probably definitely soundproof it. They do soundproof it. I've seen I've seen so many rehab shows that they definitely soundproof it. That's dope. Um before before we before we move along, I specifically wanted us to discuss Snowfall. What do you think? What, what are your thoughts? One of the best see. It was one of the best fucking seasons in his T V history ever. It was amazing. I loved it. I loved every fucking second of it. Like every second of it. I can't wait. I want that shit. I wish that shit came on tonight. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I wish it was goddamn season five starts tonight. <laughs> that shit is that shit is my shit, man. It was so it's just it's just amazing. Like it's one of my favorite all time shows of all time. And I got a lot of shows up there, but it's definitely like on some gangster shit. That shit is I fuck with it. Fuck with it very heavy. Like the the plot twist and the, the drama lines and like niggas getting smoked and shit like that and how black it is on top of all that. Like that shit is that shit is fire. And Reed Thompson is the fucking like the most sinister motherfucker in the world type shit. Like he's the fucking devil. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's such a, that's just I, fire. I, 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 I really loved, I really loved this season. Um, the prior seasons I liked one of the first season was kind of, uh, and then I liked that's it, sad. but I really loved like this season. This season was good. And it's kind of unfortunate because John Singleton is no longer involved and it got better I know. afterwards, yeah. which is kind of fucked up. Um, but he laid the ground. Yeah, he him. did. He did. Um, I, I really, I, I really like the show. The um, the uncle. What's my uncle? What's the uncle name? Alton. No, that's the father. Oh, Jerome. Jerome, Jerome oh, yeah. reminds me of my father back in the eighties. Like his his mm. demeanor, the way he talked, mm. like even his Jerry curl. Like that's how my father looked. <laughs> and my father, Where? dark skin, you know, looked like him, like. Tough dude, ain't nobody about to fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, had big respect, like, in the streets and, like, shit like that. You know, like, he just, he just reminds me of my father. The one thing that I still feel like, B, is not believable. I don't feel like if Franklin was a real person, he would be around this long. Somebody would have been took Franklin out. Even one of his That's own people. Smart, he don't I'm seem like smart that smart, look, though. though. He seem like he be fucking up and everybody is over it. But he be, but he always come through though. Do we? Or shit just kind of work yeah. out in his favor? I mean, that's the same thing. No, you're coming through is like when you, when you you make a plan and the plan works. You know what I mean? It should be working though. Like he killed man boy, like the whole, like the whole, <laughs> the whole shit. Like he found out, like he peeped, like he, he's very, he's very uh, intuitive and he's also very aware. Like, so when he peeped the whole whoop de whoop, well, old girl. And like ran to her crib before she can get there. Found that out. Boom. Kill man boy. Set up man boy. Spoiler alert if you ain't seen it, but if you have Yeah, spoiler it, alert. Shit. It's one of the greatest shows <laughs> ever. But um but yeah, all that shit, how he had the whole man boy and got them how he killed old girl and shit. Yeah, shit. I mean, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be some Fuck up. casualties in, yeah. in war, but like he he may have lose a battle or two, but that motherfucker be winning some wars now. Do you, do you feel like, do you feel like Franklin and all that makes up Franklin, if Frank, if if Franklin was a real person, do you feel like he would definitely be lasting? Cause Franklin kind of saw. Like any nigga could take out Franklin. But you ain't got to, yeah, but you got to, your mind got to be sharp though. Like it it ain't always brawn. Like the shit be chess. So niggas be ill chess players. I mean, definitely he probably could have got smoked, but he might have seen that shit coming. And he's also getting that chicken. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, Chicken means a lot. Like, cause niggas tried to take Franklin yeah. out though. Like, on some real shit. Yeah, you know and it's mean? because so, of the I mean, people that he had around him. That's chess, right? Yeah, but not if you making the people that's around you not want to be around you no more. Like, you, your, yeah, your security like, yeah. about to be lax. You know, I mean, but he that's, only that's, as strong as those people around him, like Louis and all them niggas. Like, you know, Leon and, you know what I mean? Like, he, he getting by because of them. And, and, but he's he the mentally he's the most strong out of all of them if you would you know what i'm saying if mentally like he he deals with shit and keeps it moving whereas you got leon who killed the little girl fuck that shit, like that fucked him up rightfully so um you know like fucking louis and all them like they they was i mean shit you had like the nigga didn't he got shot he almost died mm-hmm. like the nigga got shot by his girl you know what i'm saying like <laughs> like he he killed his girl daddy yeah that, that shit be quiet that shit is fire. I love what, 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 like, what would you do about Alton? Uh, as my, if he was my yeah. dad. You Franklin, what you doing about Alton? 
Because I kind of feel like uh, he got to die. Only thing I would have, yeah, I would have, I, I don't know. But I, I mean, I guess I would try to get him the fucking far away as possible. But goddamn, like, you can't rat on me, my nigga. You, this is the CIA. Right. Like, but I mean, he was in a, they was in a bind anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, they was in between a, a rattlesnake and a lion. You know what I'm saying? Like, whichever way you go is a goddamn, you know, you were dealing drugs in the CIA. But I couldn't have told on my son. I wouldn't have ratted on my son, I don't think. But not, I, not I to, think the, to the world. The, the problem I have with Alton is, is I understand he now has this passion, right? However, we done gave you one pass. You know what sure. I'm saying? And then you decided to go, you saw them kill this lady. And then you decided to sure. go back on the radio and start even more shit. Now you got a death wish. Killed the hell out of it. <laughs> That nigga read code you, black. Now you got a death wish. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, bro, like, come on. Cause, yeah. cause real talk, like, I felt like at that point in time, your choices is either you got to leave the game or you got to kill your father. <laughs> like, yeah. because when I'm watching this shit, when I'm watching this shit and I be seeing like these obstacles and shit, I'll be like, kill him. You got to. And the only reason I'm saying that is like, if you already a killer, Shouldn't be a problem killing niggas and getting them out your way. Now, for me, you know, I ain't about to go around here and kill no niggas. However, but if I'm in the business of killing niggas, I'm killing niggas. Like, I wouldn't even let the Asian lady get that far. Like, oh, yeah. I wouldn't have I let a lot of that shit, earlier. shit happen. I thought she was going to die way early. Yeah, I thought so, too. And then my thing with Alton is, like, you don't even know if you send this nigga to a different place, he going to behave then because he's so fucking amped up about right. exposing the truth, and I understand, but at the end of the day, you're going up against the fucking C I fucking A. Like, you just need to dip. I understand you care about your community and all that, but that's that's a big army that you're trying to go up against. It's an exercise of futility. Facts. Right, that nigga got, that nigga got, man, that shit, that nigga Reed, Reed is fucking, oh? Reed Thompson is the wildest nigga ever. That nigga's a gangster. I think he's just a coked out white boy that's just trying to Get along. He's a fucking gangster and he will kill your goddamn ass. <laughs> what the fuck? That motherfucker's a gangster. He ain't no fucking like, yeah, he on coke and shit, but that motherfucker will kill your goddamn ass for real. Yeah. And clean that shit up and nobody would never. Yeah. That's what the CIA does. <laughs> All that's them niggas he, do that shit. All them niggas gangsters. Gangster. You been watching, you watch Godfather Harlem? That's back on. That is back on. Yeah. Why my DVR ain't picking up? Mm. That's crazy. All right, now I gotta set my deal. Bumpy Johnson was a real nigga too. If that shit is, if that shit is real, like that nigga went, that nigga is a beast. Like he went against the whole fucking speaking of, and that nigga went against the whole fucking Italian mob and like had them niggas in his back pocket. Like that motherfucker was a beast, boy. So, so what? Are, so what are you? So what are your predictions for Snowfall next season? What are your predictions? I have no idea. Cause this nigga ain't even hurt and shit no more. So I don't know. I thought, honestly, I thought Mel was going to kill his ass. Like, I thought that was going to be like the only what was that? Like, what was that for? I didn't understand I know, that. That part was weird. It left, it was like weird. It was weird it was that he put the cane down. Like, hi, I got you. Like, what does all yeah, that like, mean? Everybody? Help me understand what yeah, that like, means. What is, yeah, it was mad cryptic. I ain't, I ain't know. It, but, which makes a good fucking yeah. season finale. Cause he leaves you. I that's, don't, that's, I don't think Alton going to be dead. I, I think they're going to find um, something is they're going to make a way out of nowhere with that. Alton's not dead or he's going to kill Reed. Um, or he is dead and the mama had him set up. Ooh, you think so? Yeah. She was walking too fucking gingerly. <laughs> like, like she was doing, she was shaking her ass and shit, walking out like, yeah, nigga, he's about to die, nigga, type shit. <laughs> so you think she will prevent everybody else from killing him just to Get him somewhere else and set him up. Yeah, just, yeah, and then slide on up. <laughs> Damn, that's messed up. Yeah. That's messed like, up. You try to kill, you try to jam my son up. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck that. And they both in business. Yeah, I just feel like Alton should just go spend the money. You know, just go chill, spend some money, be a kept man. Man, that nigga should have been gone. I'd have been out like, hey, bro, like I'm out. She get fucked. Yeah, yeah, and. Mm, she good to sell though. I love that shit, man. One time fuck. And it's crazy because like at one point or another, I was cheering for Man Boy. Like I was going for Man Boy. Like I wanted Man Boy to kind of like overtake really? the, the throne and shit. Like super fuck boy. Super duper fuck yeah, boy. Yeah, Man like, Boy was a fuck. Like I, I, his spirit though. Like his spirit was what I, like his ambition was fucking like what I was riding with. And it's fucked up because I shouldn't. But I don't know. Like he just reminded me of some niggas I know, I guess. 
that's fuck niggas for sure. But I don't know. I just felt like, cause, cause like you said, like, uh, bro, bro pissed me off. You know what I mean? Like he was doing mad weirdo shit, jamming people up, giving them a fucking yeah. shot and shit. So I kind of like felt man boy, cause man boy was on the hunt and shit. You know what I mean? Like, so it was kind of like predator prey type. How shit. you feel about uh, but, Scully changing up? Like, well, Scully did come back on this last episode, but he was going through his God paying me back. Yeah, it's kind of disappointed. Yeah, kind of disappointed with Scully, but I get it. Yeah. But I was, I was definitely expecting Scully to go like, you know, like ape shit, continually go ape shit. I like, thought Scully was going to die in that last scene with him in it at the hospital and shit. I, I think Scully's yeah, still alive. Yeah, I think he's still alive too because he said Scully was up here, but he didn't say Scully dead. So they had right. to get, they had to get to Scully and. Yeah. <laughs> nigga out and pop Scully didn't he or was it uh yep. yeah yep yep out and pop Scully yep hell yeah uh, and the and his sister was fucking I mean his old lady was fucking gangster she was wild yeah that shit man that shit was good as fuck they had and then the two girls like the that two chopped girls up that, um, fucking uh big guy yeah no was that the same girl that that ended up getting the sister like oh yeah 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 black diamond in them <laughs> yeah they that that was a that was a ill like little twist that shit was fire i fucking that shit was fire as fuck like that shit was some gangster shit i liked it i loved it a lot i couldn't wait to win i i i um you know i don't ever watch anything real time so that's why you be asking i'm like oh, i ain't even know that shit came on today i just go and see what's on my yeah, dvr nah, just, <laughs> it's something i want right, to watch right, on this bitch i'll be needing to see that shit right then yeah no nah, i don't need to do commercials so i'm definitely gonna do that, that. Um, I'll be on Twitter and shit though, so I don't want niggas to spoil that shit for me. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you on that. Um, I think that them like getting away from like all the Mexicans and shit, like it was last season. I think because this was like so black this season. Yeah, it was black. It was. It was. It, it was, was internal drama. even like more relatable if you can relate to that type of. But thing. shit, even my nigga Gustavo, Gustavo, a whole gangster too. I fuck with Gustavo. What you you think Gustavo about to be running the shit? Hell yeah, Gustavo about to be. The man. I don't think I don't think Gustavo got the patience or the business sense. Gustavo, you think Gustavo about to be running that shit? Like you think he got for the sure. business acumen for that? Like he the brawn, he the yeah. brawn clearly. He's broad. Gustavo, hey, he's he's sharp though. That nigga done made it this far. He might be a, he and he used to sell the dope for the Mexicans and shit and outlasted every Mexican yeah. <laughs> that was around. And he was getting money with the whole he was getting money with like with his Mexican brother and shit, the one that got yep, shot. Yep, true. He had a whole enterprise and shit, and he was getting money. I wanted to well, I guess that I I, I wanted to see more about like Reed, the brother, the father type shit, but I guess that whole setup was just to show like Reed's decline. Like his mental yeah. decline and shit like that, but yeah, that nigga just ain't give a fuck. Hey, yeah, Snowfall was a very good show. I tell people to definitely watch it. Um, there was a debate on Snowfall, The Wire, Power. Where do you land on that? You know, I've never seen Power, so I don't know. Power is definitely not in nowhere in the league. That shit is in middle school. <laughs> I feel like shit, niggas so. turned on Power real quick. I feel like niggas was first all se- Power and then good. like, nah, fuck this shit. First season was good. Second season was trash and shit and it just progressively got worse. Uh, in my opinion, that shit was trash. But I am interested to see some of the new spinoffs. Like, I know... Um, but you're not watching Power Book, right? Raising. Nah, I ain't watch that shit. But I'm interested to see uh, Raising Canaan. Cause it's, um, 50s character in power. Like he ended up having a spinoff on that. Like the young Kanan. Cause Kanan was a beast. Like 50s character in power was, mm-hmm. he was a fucking ruthless fucking killer. So it shows like they got a, uh, a kid's version of, not a kid's version, but of him in his adolescence becoming who he is and shit. So I'm interested in that. But, okay. um, yeah, power was trash. I would say, I think the writing was a little bit better on the wire like just the character mm-hmm. development mm-hmm. And, I can um, see that. and and how well thought out it was like i think it was just better writers overall okay. but um it's 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 <sighs> this past season for snowfall kind of took it to because it was only five seasons of of the wire yeah um but like season three season four season five were fucking excellent like super duper goddamn good and Kind of similar to that of, of, of Snowfall, but I think it was just the writing was just a little bit more fire. Like yeah. it was just the storytelling was just a little bit better because it was so many different, um, aspects continually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you had the, the news, you had the streets, you had the police, you know what I mean? I was just saying how all that shit was like all in intertwined and whatnot. Yeah. And 
And plus, I've been to Baltimore and shit. So I had seen like that shit in action type shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to Baltimore back in like 2001 and I seen that's how that shit looked and how that shit was going. Niggas trapping good and shit. So yeah. Made it more real, I guess, from nostalgic purpose. Yeah. I, I think also the reason kind of the wire is up there is because there wasn't a saturation of shit of its kind. That's at, true that, too. at that, at that, you too. know what I'm saying? At that yeah, point in time in history. Kinda, yeah, it was probably like a first. Because you know I mean? it was. we see so much now, it's so much content, and a lot of these shows put a lot in one episode. So we're used to like plot twists and all this shit going on. And like, it's constant. If, if a show is good, it's constant attention and things you need to pay attention to and XYZ. When I went to watch The Wire over again, it seems so slow to me. It yeah. seems super. I'm like, wait, we just watched a whole hour and that's as far as like we got. But that just goes to show like our attention spans <laughs> now mm-hmm. and just how TV and writing and things like that has changed because they need to make sure that they're keeping your attention for the other million shows that are out here. The other streaming right. networks, the other networks. You got cable, you got streaming networks, you got all of these competing shit. And watching The Wire, I was like, ooh, but I, I really appreciate it. And I feel like they need to give fucking Michael B. Jordan more props for being fucking Wallace <laughs> than oh, these yeah, other. <laughs> cause I still see Wallace. Yeah. That's the thing for me, like with Michael B. Jordan. Like I see Wallace cause that's how I was introduced to Michael B. Jordan. So I still see Wallace. I don't see this shit, got, sex um, symbol that name? the women Matt see. Matt Wiles and shit. Mac Wiles is up there. Yeah, Mac Wiles is not a superstar like Michael B. Jordan, though. That's true. Michael That's B. Fair. Jordan is just, he knew Denzel, pretty much. Stringer Bell. Um, fucking, Idris, um, yep. Yeah, Idris. yep. Yeah, they definitely had some. They had, they had some Bill. Method Man. Method Man was in that one. What's Method Man in that? Method Man is a working nigga. Let me tell you this. Facts. Like, this nigga be working. Like, because he's in, he's in Godfather of Harlem. And he's also Power in. Book. My wife got me watching. Oh uh, yeah, in power. My wife got me watching uh, First Wives Club on BET Plus with Jill Scott. That shit is. Ooh, shit is see, we've been trying to make a pack that everybody got buy like a, a miscellaneous app because we all don't want to buy this shit good. and share that the password. I want to watch good. that. That shit. Is, that was really good. He and that motherfucker. I'm like, God damn, this nigga be everywhere. Like looking like he fucking twenty and shit. That shit be pissing me. I'm like, this nigga, man. This nigga, fifty five years old. Man, I saw Method Man, man like on the, his fucking twenty seven. Uh, versus joint, the four twenty versus joint. I was like, that nigga is fine. And he gonna always be fine. Like, he gonna die fine. And he go to the gym. Like, he don't have, like, no dad by. Like, shout out to Method Man. Yeah, that nigga huge. Yeah, that motherfucker huge. Shout man. out to like, Method Man. Yeah. Shout out to yeah, Nas, too. You see man. that Nas, uh, Jay-Z, DJ Khaled song? I can't wait. I, uh, soon as I wake up, I'm playing <laughs> I know you are, too. I know you soon are. You be having a whole tea by the time I be waking up. You be like, this Soon shit fire. I'm like, I'm this shit, that. an hour and a half. How you already know? <laughs> like, it's 8 a.m. You I'm be like, like this shit. shit is fire. I, I listen like, to this shit already. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, I like new shit. I've always liked it. <laughs> Don't be playing. It be Christmas morning for you. Hell yeah. I, <laughs> um, that, that, that Take should be dope. Three minutes out of your time. Yeah. If you got, if you got that three minutes. Um, uh, it's been a lot going on. With Black Lives Matter and all that shit since, you know, the last time we spoke. That shit is draining. It is super draining. Um, good news. Chauvin, Derek Chauvin was uh, convicted of, of found guilty on all charges. We'll see what the sentencing looked like. Um, did you think that was going to come out any way other than what it did? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm black in yeah. America. So <laughs> I think every person and every black person, shit, I would imagine every white person too. Like, they, we was, they, nobody expected him to, you know what I mean? Like, we, I don't, I won't say nobody expected. We, it, it was expected, but it wasn't. No, I don't know if even money didn't expect it. I thought, I thought he was gonna get off. I didn't. I know, honestly like, didn't I didn't think that him. he was gonna get off. I didn't think he was gonna be found guilty on all charges. But the on, and the only reason I thought that he was going to go to jail in some way, shape, or form is because the case was so big, and they knew all hell was really gonna break loose. For this particular yeah, I, case. I heard that the other day. I was listening to something. I want to say, I was, I was thinking I was, Charlamagne was talking about, he said on Fox mm-hmm. News that they were saying, um, that 
they didn't they found him guilty more so because of the fact that he no it was dr umar matter of fact dr umar was on the breakfast club it was a, that was an interesting interview if you haven't watched it go watch it it, it was some, in, some scathing yeah hot i heard his hot takes um, umar not for me some of that shit was but nah he was kicking some shit about joe biden he was like nigga like we have been in that nigga has been in office we saved that man from to get the presidency he said fucking asians were getting niggas three asians got killed and a week later, there's a fucking bill passed yeah. for like executive orders. Correct. And I, he was like, Joe Biden ain't did shit for black people. And Obama ain't done shit, yeah. whatever. But and in reality, I'm like, God damn, like that shit really did pass in like all of a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've been getting killed for 400 fucking mm-hmm. years. And they got 50 million dollars. Yeah. Off bucks. Fact. But um, I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they were saying the Fox News was saying that the reason that um they convicted Chauvin was because um, of, you know, they didn't want potential riots and mm-hmm. what, what do or whatnot like that. So while I could believe that there, it was also a heinous act. Um, and, you know, obviously the video suggested that he, you know, obviously murdered that man with no, and the defense was yeah. horrible. Like it was not, I mean, like all roads led to him getting convicted in my eyes, but again, it's America. No so facts. They could have been, they could have definitely found some, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, I- I, yeah, I definitely I mean, felt like he was going to get the, I, I was like, they don't have any choice. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb and not because they feel like they did anything wrong. It's because they don't want the backlash from this particular case, this one, mm-hmm. because it's such a big case in American history. Um, And I was like, all right, cool. Like when I heard it, it wasn't even nothing where I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I was just like that. They did the best thing they could do for their properties, what they felt like. I just was kind of, I was pissed off, like, at the fact that, like, I'm even on this pessimistic side of the world, like, realizing, like, damn, mm-hmm. like, I'm expecting, like, the reality of it is, like, I can't even, it ain't even no deep breath. Like, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, all right. Mm-hmm. Next thing, you know, thing, you know what I mean? It wasn't, yeah, next. Next like, thing. Because a nigga got killed that same day. It's been so many killings in the past couple weeks, my nigga. That shit is It feel one, like bro. the anniversary of last year and shit. Like, it's a lot. And that shit ain't even happened yet. That's not even yet. It's nigga said nigga. I like something I heard or read. Nigga was like, he was like, it must feel like like springtime is hunting season for niggas. Hell you know what yeah, I mean? like, that motherfucker just go on the war path like for black people. And they not trying to release that the full footage of of your man's in um North Carolina, a- a- Andrew Brown. Mm-hmm. I know some people. That, yeah, I know some people. Andrew Bynum. Bynum. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I, I think it was Bynum. Brown. either Bynum or yeah, I don't know. you might be right. Okay. I'm not sure. Rest I know his son's him. name is Bynum. He's got a son for sure. His son's name is Bynum, and I just saw a fucking video about that shit because they were talking about it with the Associated Press or some stupid shit like that. But apparently, like, his son saw the video and was like, it's nothing. Nobody should ever see anything like that, especially when it's their father. Gotcha. And I was like, God damn. They said I, they only oh, saw, like, 20 seconds. Know. Had they seen more? I don't oh, know. I, I, once I heard that, I didn't want to. I didn't give a fuck about it anymore. Like, I just don't. It's just too much, man. I'm not I, the murder porn and the the excessive recycling of that shit. It's just too much for me. Like I just my my mental health has has been tried and tested yeah. this past year, and I, certain things I just can't lie. I look at it and I and I know what's to what's to know in terms of what's happening, and I keep it moving because it's just like it'd be fucking fucking me up. I go outside and shit. And I be fucking you know what I mean. Like it's just I see the police. I just lose. My, it's just too. I much. got pulled like, over in Charlotte much. this week. Well, not this week few days back but i got pulled over um in charlotte and i have not well i did get pulled over once before but that was on some bullshit where he was trying to provoke me but this was like a state trooper like he pulled me over and to keep it a band i was i was um however (laughs) however i thought i was doing normal speeding um, mm. I thought the speed limit was 70 because that's what it normally is right there. Um, but they have been doing a was lot of 77 or 85. I was doing 80. <coughs> no, I said, were you on 77 or 85? Uh, I was on 77. I think at this point in time. Mm. Yeah, I think I was on 77, but found out the speed limit was 65, no. <laughs> not 70. Um, mm. uh, and then the nigga gonna tell me I was going 87. Then you got a ticket. I got to go to court. That's basically reckless driving. Jeez Louise. That's basically reckless driving. But the thing about it is I was on the phone 
Um, I was on the phone. I was actually on the phone with my mom. She had just called or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm glad you called because, you know, it's my mama. So she'd be wanting to know I made it to my destination safe and shit like that. And I was just like, you know, um, I'm like five minutes away from where I'm going. So I um, just wanted to let you know I made it, whatever, whatever. And then I passed them. And I was like, fuck. But I was with a whole bunch of other cars and shit. You know what I mean? It wasn't like just me chilling out the bitch. And I was like, fuck. And then my mom like, what's going on? I was like, it's a state trooper. He behind me. I know he about to pull me over. So that's a bad he feeling. did. It. But the thing about it is, be like, the sinking feeling for me was not even about the ticket. It was like this could turn into anything. I know. It, it, yeah, like saying. this could turn into anything. So my mom was just like, just get your get your get your license ready. Have it ready at the uh, you know, she have it ready at the uh window, and you know. Just, just don't talk back. <laughs> and most of the time, I'm like, nah, fuck that. But this could be my life. So he came up to the shit, yeah, yeah. big white cop, big white state trooper, even scarier. You know what I mean? The I big know, white boss hog. Yeah. And he walk over, he do the same shit. He say, do you know that, uh, do you know that you were speeding? I said, no. And I already had my ID. He took the ID out of my hand and then. Uh, he was just like, where are you going? Why are you going so fast? I said, I didn't know I was speeding. And then he left. He was gone. My mom was like, maybe he'll, get, maybe he'll let you off with a warning. I said, I got out state tax. He not let me off with a warning. That's not how it works. Right. <laughs> sure. And then he came back and he was gone for about 10 minutes, came back, gave me the fucking ticket. Told me, you got to go to court. You can hire a lawyer if you want to, if you don't want to come back. Cause that's what they want you to do. They want you to hire a lawyer and then. You know what I mean? So you don't have to come back to fight the shit. And then he was just like, um, do you have any questions for me? I just said no. I ain't say nothing else. All I said was no. That was that was like the only thing. And then he was just like, make sure you're careful when you're getting back on the road. And I was just like, all right. And then I pulled off. And then when I pulled off and shit, it was kind of like a sigh of relief and shit. But I realized like how much anxiety that I had built up in that mm. 10 you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a, that's a scary it's feeling. Being fearful, like being fearful of somebody, something or someone or something is a fucking humbling feeling. Exactly. Like, I don't be scared of like motherfuckers and shit. And I don't, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not a very scary but, person, especially not with a human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? But you like, they literally decide what the fuck they want to do. They can get out and be an asshole and search a car for no fucking reason if they say they want. They you know can what I mean? fucking like, shit like pull that, me out. Lame, they pull so. that lady out by her hair. Like, they yeah. can do any fucking thing that they want, and they the fact that we are yeah. recording that shit makes no difference. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm always on my soapbox about we need to change the laws based on current times. We got these same laws based on old shit. I do not feel like we need to be having a fucking four-day, five-day, week-long trial for some shit. We all see what's going on. We saw yeah. it from beginning to end. What are we debating here? What What's, what's the problem? Why? It's amazing. They'll change the laws for the things that need to change. Like, did you see the shit in Oklahoma where you like, uh, you can drive over protesters? What? Yeah, you know, like you can run over a protester and kill them, and you will not have any. It will not be. So any how they target. frame that so, law? Is it like the if, the, if the if the protester is blocking your way, or they had to have something tied yeah, so to it? So then it's super subjective, right? You like stand your ground. That. So that's just up there, up to your interpretation. Like, hey, motherfucker, can, I can be walking with a damn a sign for fucking school or some shit and in your way. And then you can just decide that I'm black and I'm protesting you being white and run you the fuck. And, and I bet that shit don't work both ways. I know that shit don't work both ways. So let's run through a a fucking see them motherfuckers. You can murder somebody legally. Like you can run the mother. It says you can run people. Excuse me. You can run people over. What state is this again? As a result. Oklahoma. Damn. I think it's another state. Like they just introduced that shit. Look, look. Oklahoma that shit is a racist right ass place. I'm learning. I mean, the whole country Everybody. racist. Don't get it twisted. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just I mean, learning that, that part of the world. Like that's that Texas, and you know what I mean. Like that's that's the south southwest yeah. of the world. Like, yeah. South 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 mid southwest type shit. Uh, um. Why you why you getting out your black facts? I want to ask you one more question related in about uh. BLM and Black Lives Matter. So the Black Lives Matter co-founder bought a house for $1.5 million. Tamika Mallory is doing like Cadillac 
commercials and shit like that. Do you feel like people should be able to profit off the movement? Yeah. I mean, as long as it's not maliciously, like at the, at the, at the, um, at the expense, yeah. if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like she's like, you know, like doing like a commercial for, uh, like with George Floyd's knee on his neck and underneath a Chevy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like it'd be like an Apollo or some shit. Oh and she God. got them doing like, you know, like, a, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like some shit, like some, but I mean, if she, if she, if they have a social justice initiative and she's able, like she's, she's, a, no, it's just the a Cadillac. Me, like, it's like a straight up selling a Cadillac. It ain't nothing related I mean, to justice. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at that. Like she, why she can't be like, why she can't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she's a known face. Like why she can't go get an acting gig. I ain't yeah. mad at that. I mean, I, I personally, um, put it in the same vein as like pastors and shit like that. They make yeah. money. My I whole mean, thing like, is as long as you are not, um, embezzling funds that you're collecting for the purpose of activism, you know uh, what I'm saying? And, and I'm unsure if that job should come with a salary, to be completely honest. I yeah. don't know if, if if being an activist should be a full-time job where you get paid in this right. particular type instance. Not, I mean, but that shit costs. It do cost. Like, you got to get, like, shit, nigga, niggas be going to court, going to fucking jail and organizing and got fly to here. And fly, I mean, you know, some would, some would call them ambulance chasers and shit yeah. like that, but I mean, I ain't doing the shit, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I can't really be mad, you know what I mean? And then I heard the girl with BLM, like, she she was a high-ranking Oh, yeah, she said somebody. she got her like, own she, money. She, she money. said she ain't never took no money from BLM. Like, she got, yeah, money. She got money. Like Yeah, she was, I mean, she, clearly she's yeah. smart, you know what I mean? Anno- she's like a professor and some other shit. Yeah, like, I don't, I, don't be in, I don't be counting motherfuckers' pockets, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really into that, like, you know to that like i can't tell motherfuckers like if you're doing some egregious you know blatantly fucking out in the open you know what i'm saying shit that i'm a part of then i would have an issue with it but i mean i don't know like they need to be paid for their services just the same i mean i i, I, I like i said i'm not necessarily sure if i feel like you should be paid for the movement because either you want to do it or you don't you know what i'm saying i feel like you should receive like stipends and shit like that to make these trips and shit but like an actual salary like niggas is donating for you know what i'm saying for the movie. i mean i ain't mad at paying like a civil servant like we pay civil servants now you pay like governors and you know but I mean? you're like, self-appointed you, that to... <laughs> like, like you know what i mean like i'm not saying it's bad like if people want to pay them people should pay them but I feel like, you know, this type yeah. of activism is you're saying you you care about this cause and you want to be on the front lines of this cause. Like, cool with it. That's what's up. I do understand, like, if you need a plane ticket or some shit like that, but I'm not donating for just, like, your life. Like, your regular life. I mean, yeah. But, I mean, everybody has I mean, different, different standings. You know what I'm saying? Different standings on that. But like I said, I always think of it as like the same thing with like the preachers and pastors and shit like that. And you out here rolling in your congregation out here, you know, struggling and giving you they last in order because they believe yeah, in you and they up. believe in yeah, something. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's kind of like the same thing. Now, if you are able to make your money off of like these commercials and selling books and shit like that, definitely with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Definitely with it. I'm I'm with it when 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 preachers and shit do that shit. When they selling shit yeah. on the side, but when your whole yeah. income come from people believing in you and they want you to do something of significance with this money, I don't know if you getting some Balenciaga shoes plays into the cause. But I do think that it's dope like that the these people um are able to, you know, be a voice. A, a legitimate voice and you know they want to like sell some cars and shit as well i guess you know um just make sure the companies that you align yourself with is in full alignment because basically yeah i mean that that's definitely that's definitely a a, a paramount in, in in that you know what i mean like it has to be written yeah in clearly but or you you know not written in but you need to do your due diligence in terms of where they Facts. stand in terms of racial matters Facts. but Shit, man. You gotta get your money. Shit. Goddamn. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. Well, let's get into some skibby to be bop. Oh, B's Black Facts. What you got for us today, B? Um, 
This ain't really nothing special. It was just uh, Prince passed away on April 21st. We didn't record. We were supposed to record last week, mm-hmm. so we didn't. So I was going to mention that. But, um, yeah, it was just a rest in peace to Prince. He was born in, you know, July, on June 7th, 1958 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and died on April 21st, 2016, also in Minnesota. Damn, so that was five everybody knows ago. the Lord Prince and how great he was and how dope he was. Um, one of my favorite songs. I got a couple favorite songs by Prince. I think... Um, uh diamonds and pearls and um diamonds and pearls for sure and when doves cry and um i want to say maybe 1984 or some shit like that or what was I that shit? Go- <laughs> um, um, <laughs> i don't know what to put it. oh no 1999 was it not yeah 1999 party like it's 1999 yeah. yeah 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 so just one time for prince man i like all the prince hits and I realized that when like Prince died and like they were playing Prince songs that were like on albums and shit, I was like, oh, I really don't know Prince. Like I thought <laughs> that I yeah, knew Prince. Sure. I know his hits and that's what I know of Prince. Whereas Michael Jackson, I know more. I know his catalog. Like I know. Yeah. Prince was super talented. Um, I, I think I heard a story the other day. Who was it? I forgot. Who. Oh, it was Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz was saying that. Shout out to Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz he's fine like, too. He's an old fine man too. He's a he's nasty though. He's he's like a white man though. Because he was like he went. Prince picked him up. He was like, yeah. Prince picked me up one time. And he was like, hey, I'll be at your house in thirty minutes. And he was like, okay. And he was like, he's like, I hadn't showered for a couple of days and shit. You know what I mean? And like, mind you, he said thirty minutes. So you had ample time to go and take a bath. And shit, right? So he was like, I hadn't showered in a couple of days. You know, I was looking all crazy. So. He said he comes and picks me up in, in this like purple Cadillac, um, uh, purple Cadillac limo. He said, so he was, he was like, where are we going? He was like, we're going to go fuck with Michael for a little bit. He was like, huh? He was like, Michael, we want to go fuck with Michael Jackson real quick. He and he in there recording, but he don't know I'm coming. And him and Mike used right. to be Right. That's why I was you know, like, ain't know, they like he, East Coast, West Coast? Yeah. So he ran, he like, we ran up on him and shit. And he was like, here I am. Like, he was like, I'm all like messy and like hadn't been taking a bath. And these motherfuckers is like pristine. Like every hair is in place. Like they smell. And amazing. you know, they bodies like, wax to the T, both of them. Not yeah, a hair on. You know what I mean? Right. Not a hair <laughs> on and shit. And he was like, they was dressed to the nines and shit. And he was like, and they just in there joking on me and shit. Me dirty and shit and like just fucking with me. And then he's like, we just jammed out for a little bit. And then we left. He was like, it was, it was super wild as shit ever. But. It was a dope story because I didn't, you know, you never, you always hear them beefing, but clearly they, you know, obviously used to fuck with each other and shit like that. I, I so, wish we could get like um, that tea for real, like from, from Prince yeah, and Mike, either like either one, like to get like the real tea because that is the rumor that they've had beef. Like they've had beef for a long time. And then you hear stories like this and you're just like, but they couldn't have but so much beef. Yeah, I mean, they could have definitely seen each other, but I think they, they seen each other a couple times, like on some shit. I would have loved that to one. see that fight. I see a lot of windmilling. Yeah, Mike would have beat his ass. Mike got brothers. Mike got nine brothers. Mike done been in a million fights. Mike seemed like he'll go cry in the corner. I, I got, I got, Mike real was, talk, nigga, I, got, I, got Prince. Jackson. I got Prince. I got Prince. I got Prince in the fight. Mike beating the shit Hell no, I, I see. I, I feel yeah, like bro, Prince Mike had to fight. from Gary, Indiana. Ain't you from Gary? Oh, you from Milwaukee. First of all, <laughs> like, not from either from... place, but I did live in Milwaukee. Yeah, but you... Yeah, you you thumped a little bit in 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 I did but it. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I but, did uh, it at all. But nah, nah, man, Mike, he was the baby of nine brothers. You think that nigga ain't get his ass whooped? Now, do I think Mike can probably take an ass that. whooping? Yes. Do I think Mike can give an Mike ass whooping? No. Man. Nah, you run. Mike was a whole crit. <laughs> you crazy as hell. That nigga was throwing up rolling six. Yeah, Chris seemed like the type of nigga that come open hand smack the fuck out. And walk Prince away. Was athletic because he could hoop. He was he could athletic. He was athletic, so he might have a little something like. And he probably do like flips and shit. And shit. Yeah. He was mad petite. But he probably do flips yeah, and athletic. shit. My money definitely on Prince. <laughs> Mike, Mike, fucking, Mike, fucking, <laughs> fucking Prince up, okay. Mike, Mike, gonna goddamn get a flashback. A Joe beating his ass and shit. And that nigga gonna get in a fetal position. Hey, you hey. be fronting on Mike. Hey, nigga, he told you that they don't really care about us. You better stop playing with Mike. <laughs> Do me, sue me, everybody do me. <laughs> yeah, he told you. That nigga told you. They, they don't really about care about us. That's what he was saying. But he all morphed yeah, into he a white moon, woman. Well, he was moonwalking, my nigga. Like, he beat up niggas dancing and shit. Like, he was, goddamn, you know, he had a video game where he was fucking niggas up. Come on, man. 
<laughs> they be fronting on Mike. Mike well, man, that Mike is he fought. He fought goddamn monsters and shit. <laughs> yes. So if he's yeah, ever he's beat up by Mike. a monster or need to do dance, Prince. dance revolution, I got my money Prince, on Mike. Prince couldn't even beat up. Prince couldn't even beat up Morris Day in them. You tell me he come and fuck, fuck with Mike. Um, so Prince Morris Day and fucking Michael Jackson. Who went that shit? Nigga, Mike. Beat you think Mike like, beating up Morris Day whole, too? Bro, he calling the Jackson Five, and them niggas gonna school shoot the ones, and niggas gonna be looking crazy. As Nigga, fuck. he called that Jackson Five. They might help them, them, help them niggas jump Mike. <laughs> crazy as fuck. Don't do it like that. <laughs> crazy as hell. Tito gonna come through with. The, he gonna swing the fucking the, the uh, guitar and shit. Oh Hit man, Jermaine head. gonna come you know through looking like fuck California raisin with that paper mache yeah, hair. Gonna beat them, beat them niggas smooth up. He already jailed up. Like he got the Vaseline on his face. Black Johnny Bravo yeah. style. With the yeah, beat the hell out of them <laughs> niggas, man. That nigga playing. Hey, that would be that would be a great fight, man. Jackie come through. Jackie used to fight. You seen American um, like Joe used to have them niggas in the yard thumping like shit. No Mike got them. No Mike can got them throw throw a couple. He ain't soft. Shit, that nigga used to talk to Mike mice. That nigga soft. That nigga, nigga super he, soft. Nigga, he, that's the only niggas that understood him. <laughs> hey, nigga I hear that. Hell. Hey, listen. Front Listen, if, if we get into a fight in heaven, you can put Michael Jackson on your side. <laughs> we'll do that. Sure. We'll do that. You pick your squad, I pick my squad. <laughs> All right, you ready to get into some litter shit? Yeah, let's do it. You know how we roll. All right, let's get into litter shit. Litter shit is our pop culture segment where we talk about all the fuck shit on your timeline. I am drinking Deep Eddie's Peach Vodka. And tonic water. Mm. Nice. <laughs> what was in your cup? Was it water? Uh, I had a couple beers earlier today when I got off because my folks was getting on my nerves and <laughs> oh, right. smoked some weed. So you know how that goes. I just went and got my uh pick. Um oh, word. Yeah. Um so we are going to get into this bullshit. So your boy, uh some interesting things are unfolding in your favorite one hit wonders world, Mr. Blueface. So he has like a bunch of air quote girlfriends under one roof. Um, who he is telling them that they need to get branded or get lost. So some video footage surface of a uh, blue face in his house. And he has all these bunk beds that are full of women sleeping in them. And he's like waking them up, announcing that they need to get tattoos today. Um, and I think all of this is surfacing online in the way that it is, is because it kind of gives you kind of like cult vibes. <laughs> Um, I don't know if y'all remember, but Blueface had a bunch of girls like fighting in his house before. Like Blueface always got something crazy going on. Like it's never anything positive going on with that guy, but they have made comparisons to him and been cracking like, unfortunately, R. Kelly jokes, you know, at his expense. Um, but they seem like it may be going a little bit too far for his image. It doesn't appear that the guy is doing anything illegal. Um, as far as we know, at first glance, even though there are allegations that one of the girls in the house may be 14 years old. Um, not sure, not sure about that, but it looks like, um, Blueface's, uh, shenanigans might be tied to a reality show. If I had to guess, I would say Zeus. <laughs> if it is a reality show, I'm I heard it's on OnlyFans. Oh, it's on OnlyFans? On only yeah, it's on OnlyFans. Got you. So it's 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 a reality show that's currently going on? Yeah. Gotcha. On OnlyFans. Gotcha. So have you seen it? Do you know anything about it? Fuck no. Oh, I ain't uh, seen that shit. But I just heard it. I heard about yeah. it. Just being on OnlyFans. Yeah. You know, uh I'm not going on OnlyFans ever. Like I tried to get on Amber Rose because she said she had some free shit. But I can't <laughs> see what she was doing, but that shit was asking me for too much information. I was like, hey, uh, right, right, right. I got, I got a, um, it's funny cause I have a, a investigation going on and a nigga been spending his time on OnlyFans. At work? Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> right, right. But maybe he watching like National Geographic videos or some shit. And you know, that was the thing that I was telling like IT. I was like, I need y'all to pull the information, pull the images and I need y'all to send them over to me because, you know, I had to educate them. 
I'm the cool hip person, I guess. Uh, I had to educate them on OnlyFans and tell them that like, yeah, OnlyFans is known for porn, but that may not be what it is. It's probably what it is. But, <laughs> you know, I had to let them know, like, he could be looking at his favorite artists. He could be looking at fucking Chris Brown drop some new music or some bullshit. So I had to educate them on the fact that OnlyFans was not just for porn, although that is the the major hub for amateur porn. Um, but that's not always what it is. Um, if that's for OnlyFans, that's crazy. So that means people are paying to watch this. Mm-hmm. Which is even more crazy. Um, I, you know, me looking at this, it wasn't even about Blueface for real. Like, it wasn't even about Blueface because I'm used to whenever I see Blueface, it's always some bullshit behind it. Like, it's, it's never anything positive behind it. But what gets me be is just like, how do people become so fucking lost? Like, especially like these girls, y'all looking for love and fame and clout, like in the same place that you're willing to get a one hit wonders name tattoo on your body for I a mean, look. You know, it's mad black girls and black boys lost. Like, right. Like, be having dysfunctional ass homes. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's how that shit operates. Like, of us be coming from all types of situations and shit. And, be looking for you know all types of place, ways to, attention in the wrong yeah, place. Yeah, always exactly like trying to you know get some money or really just need somewhere to stay. I mean, yeah. you know, ops, uh, different ways motherfucking get to that point. But most of it is from the dysfunction from childhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? This this trauma thing, daddy issues, mommy issues. You know, I was having a conversation the other day, and I'm just like, yo, y'all, you just gotta realize is that your parents is people with kids. Like they people. Yeah, they humans. Humans that have humans. Yeah, like they just people with kids. It ain't no fucking qualifier. It ain't no test you gotta take. It ain't no competency test you yeah. gotta take to be a parent. Sex. Motherfuckers had sex one night. And <laughs> right. And let's keep it a band. Time. Majority of us here are mistakes. Like, it's not that many people. It's the percentages are small of people actually planning. Oh, yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? And most of those people who are doing like this extreme planning is because they can't have children <laughs> for whatever reason. Either it's a like, reproductive I issue, I mean, same most, sex issue. A lot of people that are married, like, I mean, I planned on well, my, my two, my three times, well, my two times being pregnant with my wife, well, we plan those. So, I mean, a lot of people do plan them. Like they plan, you know, they. Out of the people you baby. know, how many people plan their children? Um, I mean, I'd say because I probably know maybe thirty percent. My probably a lot of people that ten, fifteen percent, if that. Yeah. And majority of them is because they lesbians and they just want to have a baby, so they got to go through some steps in order to make that happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they got to right. go through some steps to make that happen. But at the end of the day, whether you planned it or not, it still ain't no. That don't mean you're gonna be a good parent. It's fuck parents oh, yeah, out here sure. planning to have well, kids all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? It's niggas out here begging women to have their child and they don't take care of the other ones. Like, it's motherfuckers out here planning in the wrong way, but I just be like, bruh, like, it just be so sad. I I had a, um, one of my sisters, bruh, let me say this real quick, because this really did hurt my heart. One of my sister friends, um, they grew up together. I know her since she was a kid. You know what I'm saying? We all kind of grew up together or whatever. And like, she is like, strung out on drugs bad like 33 maybe 32 33 years old got three mm. kids strung out on drugs and like i she we had her on facetime last week one day and like my sister knew that like that she was on something because people was calling like you know like your friend um, she out here doing this, 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 and now I'm not going to say her name, but you know, she out here doing this, this, and that. So like my sister called her and she clearly like high off her ass, but like she was going like in and out, whether she, she'll talk reckless and then it'll just be like some demonic shit, bro. Like she was just, mm-hmm. we was just having a, a regular conversation. It was me and my two sisters. We, we was hanging out and she was on the FaceTime and then she was just talking regular. And then she was just like, Oh bitch, hope you choke. Die, bitch! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! I'll die! You die! Blah, 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 blah. 
Uh, and like, she had some Tourette's. Hell yeah. Like, bruh, on, on no bullshit. Like, I didn't grew up in DC in the eighties and the nineties. You know what I'm saying? I done seen drug addicts. I done had drug addicts in my family. I done had drug addicts in my home. Like, I done seen all that shit, but this shit, these motherfuckers is on. It is some different shit. It ain't even like no crack or no mm-hmm. shit. It's got motherfuckers like tripping the fuck out. Like, you'll be surprised with like when you go to DC. I don't know about other areas. But it's so many young people out here walking around like fucking zombies. Like, mm. it's fucking scary. And they doing like these lean and they fucking doing these dippers where you dip your weed in embalming fluid and all this shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah both, both been a DC stable forever. Facts. And they, so they doing that and mixing it with the other shit too, with the perks and all that shit, putting all these drugs together. Yeah. It's sad, bro. Like, it's they sad. Whole chemist stop this motherfucker. It's sad. You know, the whole chemistry experiment inside their fucking body. Facts. Super facts. And then, out. like, my whole thing about it is, like, I be so super hurt for the children in these situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, because kids yeah. don't ask to fucking be here. Now they got to grow up with all this trauma and shit. It's rumors like she's mm-hmm. she been fucking selling her daughter and like all this type of shit. I know that shit happens. And too. them motherfuckers, I know, I know people like that. Them motherfuckers debating on that if they should call the people because the child gonna be in the system. And my whole thing about it is, we know what's going on here. We at right. least need to give the child a chance. I know that ain't no guarantee, but at least we need to give the child a chance. To thrive yeah, someplace else when we already know the situation girl. here. My wife, homegirl, used, um, she had a, like, she was in the process of adopting a little girl. And like, the little girl was nice. You know what I'm saying? She used to come to the crib with her homegirl and shit. And she'd be cool. But like, one time it was just me and her in the room. Like, I don't know weird shit. Like, it was just like, like, I think Eric, like the, my wife and her homegirl got up for a second. And like, she just like froze the fuck up. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it was like, mm-hmm. she's all of six. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Maybe five or six. And I'm like, I was like, did you want something to drink? She was like, no. And like real, yeah. like short and like, you know Scared. what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what the fuck. And I'm like, and so that shit like sent me on. Like, like are you okay? Can I do yeah. anything for you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't trying to, you know what I mean? And then I just go like, I, and they, they came back shortly thereafter, but, um, to fast yeah. forward. So like, um, my wife, I was like, yo, that shit was wild. That shit was like, I don't know. And then, so she found out later, like the girl ended up like they were trying to adopt her, but they ended up having to give her back because mm. she had been like sex, like her mom was selling mm-hmm. her, like on the cat bus, which is the, the, the transit bus here. Like she'd be on the cat bus and like, you know what I'm saying? Like five years old, six years old, like they'd be in the fucking bus station and she'd be getting loose with niggas and shit. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like she'd be, you know what I mean? And like, like, and I, the shit that really fucked mm. me up was when, like when she described it was, she was like, I don't like when the worms come out. Mm, like, don't tell me that, B. Is. That you know, breaks my nigga, heart. That nigga, breaks that my heart. Me, I'm like, nigga, she was thinking that the worms was going to come out of me or some shit. Like, that shit, oh. shit man. And I have a daughter. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, and that shit be, man, that shit, but that, listen, that was before I had a little mm. girl. Like, that was before I even had kids and shit. That shit, fuck, that shit hurt. And now, and so, but it, and it, it, fast forward, now that I have children, right? So, one, this little girl can go be in the, like sit right beside my little girl in school in class. Or yeah, sit beside that. my little boy. Well, she's super sexually yeah. advanced at fucking seven, mm-hmm. <laughs> not even 12. Like she at nine, mm-hmm. 10 years old, she like know what the fuck is what the fuck. So one, she corrupt my, she can corrupt my little girl. Or your you know what I'm saying? Like, one, she could, or my yeah. point. Yeah. Or fucking molest my son and do all this other shit. Cause I mean, you think about it, like I knew mad little fast little girls when I was, you know, like 12 and, like, man, I used to go with girls from the projects, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't live in the projects, so them motherfuckers was, you know what I mean? Like, they was wide open, and I was, like, square as hell in terms of, you know, like, that part. Like, I ain't, you know, I always like girls and used to kiss and shit, but them motherfuckers, would be, like, sixth grade motherfuckers be pulling your dick out and all that. Like, that shit was wild. Like, way more advanced than I was, and looking back, like, very easily, I mean, the projects is the projects, you know, that shit is, you know, a different breeding ground, if you yeah. will, but, like, shit all in that like it very well could have been some molestation because a lot of girls be getting molested a lot of girls but more so girls like niggas niggas is fucking nasty b and it's in such abundance that it's so fucking scary like it is it is scary it shouldn't be that many fucking perverts out here it is an abundance of perverts perverts. niggas is perverts niggas is perverts and 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 that is that is so that is so fucking scary and like even like taking it back to Looping back around to the whole like R. Kelly thing, like even at a young age when these debates were going on, I just felt like people were fucking ignorant to blame it on these girls to be like, oh, well, is she giving it up like that? Nigga, these kids are fucked up. 
They are traumatized oh, yeah. and they're it's only like, and doing the what they know to do. Word is exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no ra- rational Come on, man. You an adult shit. in this situation. And so like I be thinking about shit like that. Like my like my kid can you know, like it's as a par- parental paranoia is some yeah. weird, some wild shit. Cause like, you know, like it's very easy that my little girl can fall in love with a little nigga that grew up with, you know, seeing his daddy yeah. be his mom or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like and that's that's the reality of it. Or, you know, my son can fall in love with a girl that's super sexually promiscuous and you know what I mean? And just, I don't, that shit is. Or crazy. listen, my, 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 my friend, um, it could be the other way around too. You can, there are kids out here that have too much fucking freedom, right? And yeah, they're not sure. used to hearing no and things like that. And things can get out of mm-hmm. hand and get aggressive. My friends, my friend's nephew or little cousin, um, kill the girl. Cause she mm-hmm. didn't, cause she didn't want to be with him no more. Chopped her up. At, at, at fucking 18 years old. She was 17. He 18. Yeah. And it's just like anything yeah. can fucking I said, I know, happen. I know a little, my little nephew that, uh, that you met that time mm-hmm. he came to my crib, his homeboy, these niggas, these niggas, his, he and his baby mama then killed their baby, their two month old baby riding around in the goddamn car all in California with the bed, like the dead baby. Like, what you mean? What? Mm-hmm. They yeah, killed from Greensboro. They killed the baby like, and rolled just, around with the baby in the car. Yeah, they just, they had killed the baby at some point and another on their fucking, their, their road trip throughout the world and fucking like, yeah, just the baby in the back. Like they just got a dead baby. With so it. be. Motherfuckers is crazy. 20 something years old, like 20, I think 20, 21 at the be, most. Th- th- here, here's my other thing, right? With, with situations like that, like I understand one crazy person. How do you convince yeah, other people to join in? Like, how do you convince your girl or whoever, Jesus. whoever That's killed, funny, I don't know who fought it was on, but y'all got this dead it's baby like and y'all both. cool with it. Yeah. Like, the shit is wild because, like, motherfuckers be coerced into doing shit. Like, you just be love is blind type shit. Like, you just, I don't know, man. Don't love me that much. No. Don't love me that much where I can leave you down, like, to drown you. Don't love Listen, me that much. Like, I, I'm don't, already apprehensive. I don't, I don't want that responsibility. I'm already apprehensive when you know me for a short amount of time and you act like you're in love with me. Like, that's a little yeah, obsession sure. yeah, to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm dope. I ain't that dope. Like, calm down. Like, you don't, yeah, you don't know me sure. to, to be in love with me or to be obsessed with me. Cause I'm a whole serial killer. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? I'm about to goddamn chop your toe off tomorrow. <laughs> No, I've been thinking Chris about it on Chris. my end. Like, if you that obsessed with me and we ain't even nothing, like, listen, I watch mm-hmm. Fatal Attraction all that all the time. Motherfuckers be on some if I can't have you type shit all the time. Niggas be on that shit all the time. Boil a rabbit, motherfucker, we'll boil a rabbit on Bruh, that shit is fucking scary. People is fucking nuts. Mental health is is at a decline. For you to ride around with a dead, bruh, that that just made yeah. it. And that's my like, that's my little nigga, like his homeboy and shit. But I he. I met the nigga one time. He was super weird. I was like, I told nephew, I was like, man, that nigga ain't right. Yeah, you, know you like, felt it. Steer clear of that nigga. Your yeah, intuition was like, on like clear. shit. Yeah, but it was multiple niggas. I told him that shit. Like he was just, he was just a fuck nigga. What, what was your, what was I, your uh nephew or your his his cousin? Nah, he just was, that shit was whack. We was, we was just talking about. It. He was like that shit was the craziest shit ever, dog. He did like, he see it coming? Like, like, did he think the nigga was weird? Even though all y'all was telling him the nigga was weird. Yeah, he knew, I mean, he knew not that he ain't really fuck with him, but you know how that shit go when you're 18. Like, you think, you know, everybody a nigga type shit because they smoke weed. Shit like you know what I mean? Like, you know how that shit go. Like, you, you know, y'all in the same area. So you just got to like, you know, it's hard to tell an 18 year old. Like, you can give them the game, but a lot of this shit is just living on living. You know what I mean? Like, nobody, nobody teaches you like life. Like, you know what I mean? You're going to have to burn your hand a couple of times to realize that shit hot. So, yeah. you know, that's just yeah. the reality of that. Oh, man. Um. Yeah, man, it, it's unfortunate. Uh, Blueface in his house of hoes is leadership. Uh, if everybody's consenting, yeah. then motherfuckers is paying for it. Yeah. Sounds lit to me. Yeah. Y'all stupid, yeah, y'all but, are stupid. But like you said, if everybody yeah, is, fool's room. you know, if everybody is of age and consenting, regardless of the trauma that has you there, then it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. it, ladies, just kind of have a little bit more respect. Blue face baby. <laughs> he like the lamest nigga. Like so fucking lame. Uh, I don't see y'all bitches like him just off of regular shit. But hey, to each his own. Uh, so, uh, Mendeecees and Yandy. You know of them, right? You watch Love and Hip Hop. You know them. 
So, yeah. man, this is in Yandy. Um, we thought they had weathered like they storm coming out unscathed, but they was on a uh, episode of Couples Retreat. And, um, man, this is confessed that he didn't confess that basically he don't know if he will hold Yandy down like she did him. Um, he also complained about the fact that Yandy didn't spoke with him almost every day, but not every day. Um, and his analogy was that I know if I was out here in these streets, she would be kidding me up every five minutes. So don't treat me no different <laughs> while I'm in jail than when I'm out of jail. Um, Yandy was clearly hurt because, you know, she didn't held this nigga down for like seven years or some shit, however long he was locked up. Uh, to our knowledge, she was faithful. And Yandy was out this bitch fighting for prison reform and, and everything. So she was hurt. Getting locked getting up. Getting locked up. Yeah, Taylor. Goddamn. Raising kids. Facts. Like, um, but she was clearly that. hurt that she was under the misconception that he would hold her down the same way that she would. Um, what, what was your thoughts on that? Just. They could have lied to me. <laughs> Like, yeah, of course. Like, just, you should, yeah, like, bro, you on TV? Like, goddamn, like the fuck? Listen, you definitely supposed to at least facts. lie. Like, you can't just. I say that shit. I'm like, man, nigga, you lie. Can. Like, I'm not. You, you know, like, you can't be an asshole yeah. like that to not like read the room. My <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even if you felt like that, like, hell, man, bitch, I want to get. Hey, man. I was like, on both sides of that for a minute, and I was just yeah, like, I mean, I rocking with honesty, integrity. But, I get it, but also it's kind of yeah. like I feel like I would have to internally take that L in order one not to look like an asshole like you said and two yeah. not to hurt my girl who has literally done everything she can that we right. know of well, of course I'm we only bad. know what well, we know first, but has done everything sure. to hold me down while I was incarcerated for a long time yeah, not no six months yeah. 60 days you was in that bitch for years yeah, you was in, you was, you was, you had, you did a stretch, my back. Bro. And she, she, she held, she held you down in that bitch. Hell yeah, she was, she was papoose to your Facts. ring. Facts. And you ain't, you ain't black love. Or I fuck. was just like, <laughs> when he was talking about like, oh, she didn't hit him every day. She was like, I talked to you in some way, shape or form, literally like every day. Like I've been fucking raising the kids. I've been running five Maybe businesses. You in prison, the fuck? <laughs> you get, I'm free. What y'all doing? Free? Shit. How selfish like, is relax, that? Man. I feel like that is so fucking selfish. Yeah, I feel like nigga, it's unappreciative, ungrateful, and just some unmitigated audacity for you to even come yeah, out your I face probably, like that. That should have been over for me right then. Like, you don't give a fuck about me. I'm out. Like, I, I'm getting money. Like, I'm out. She like, And she don't need him. That's what I'm saying. Like, she clearly, if she, you know, crusades for the fucking, the, 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 the world and black matters and yeah. getting money and shit. Like, she deserves shit and everything. She getting yeah, and, and, and it was. From the outside. Yeah, I guess, all we giving is the T as far as what we know. You know what I'm saying? He came back and he said that, you know, he was just saying that you never know what you would do in that situation until you in that situation. I feel like that is true. Well, I know what you should have did in that situation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts. Man, nigga crazy. Like, nigga lie. Nigga just, just to say, like, I, nigga you know, I just, just lie. Yeah, a little white lie that wouldn't hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? It hurts. Like the truth hurts for sure. But like, goddamn, like, bro. And you know my I mean? and my whole like, thing about that is, I feel like the chances are slim of mm -hmm. Yandy going to jail for some years. Anything can happen. Don't get it twisted. But I feel like chances are slim for her to go to jail for some years for yeah. some shit. So you could have lied about that shit because you never have to. It's a rare chance that you actually gonna have to cross that bridge. Even if she did, even if she did go to jail, then things change. You yeah. know what I mean? Like then you can like hey, said that. <laughs> True. It's not as, it's not as easy as I and, thought. Yeah, I have needs I and go. I was you unable know, I mean, I to suppress them. On. When you get out, how let me take <laughs> shit, but, Hey. Nah, listen, I felt like that was like one of the ultimate like smacks in the face type shit. She in front of in front of motherfuckers. Shit, Don't embarrass me, my nigga, because I will leave you yeah, for embarrassing like, me. On some real shit. I would have definitely divorced that nigga right then, like, but shit. All right, cool. I'm out. Fuck this shit. <laughs> I know that check was probably right, though. They probably get a nice little check. And that's my thing, too. Like, did you say it for the shock factor? That's it. Yeah, sure. But yeah, they seem legit hurt. And she, no, nah, shit, that shit. Yeah, was, she seemed legit she hurt. And, and I haven't even seen the whole episodes. I saw a bunch of clips, though. 
Yeah, I ain't seen it. I saw um, it it's definitely on my DVR because I said it to record. But I was just like, yo, that's fucked up. And I know you regret that shit. Like, nigga, I done did all this shit for you. And you talking about you ain't talk to me 15 times a day like you would if I was out. Nigga, because you ain't out. Man, right. But, you know, nigga, I, I got kids. I got two of your children out here that I'm trying to raise. And, and let's keep it a band. The nigga had a baby on her. It's a kid in between their kids. He had a baby on her. And she took care of that baby too. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, had, he had a baby on her good. since they've been together. But here's my thing with Yandy too. Like, nigga, all that should have been a clue. If that nigga ain't gonna respect you out, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. In the, in the, in, in the free world. If you go to jail, you know that nigga all, all bets are all. So I don't even know why you would do th- that love hip hop marriage bag must have been stupid. Had though. to be. But you know, a lot of times they people got married. Just, didn't they get married? Yeah, but they're not even legally married. They're not legally married. That came out like a year after he went to jail and shit. They're not legally married, and and see, that's one of the reasons I, I feel like, from a character standpoint, not necessarily in this situation, but I'm I was never really a fan of Yandy. Yandy always seemed like she was on some shit for for a look. And try to portray herself as different than what she is. But in this particular, in this particular instance, she came back and, well, she was exposed for not really being married. And she basically framed it up as he owes restitution and all that shit. So I ain't want to le- legally marry him because that makes me legally obligated financially to pay back his shit and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But you still lied about it. Contracts. Yeah, you still yeah. lied about it. Whatever your, cause you didn't have to tell us you was married. It wouldn't have made us no mm-hmm. difference if you were married or not. Now you'd have had this sham of a wedding, <laughs> which is not even yeah, legally exactly. binding. People, what y'all need to understand is a wedding in a, in a, in a, in a, in a fucking pastor does not make y'all married. You gotta go get the license. The paperwork is what make you married. You have all the ceremonies you want to have. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> right. <tomorrow. laughs> right. We have a ceremony on this podcast right now and it's still, <laughs> make you legally married. But I felt like, you know, I just felt like that was real fucked up. And I felt, I feel like, you know, I don't know why. And I, and it's nature and nurture. Why women are so fucking stupid. Like when it comes to love, love technically makes you stupid. It releases that chemical to your brain that makes you stupid. It's like a fact that you are less intelligent when dealing with certain situations, when you are in love with somebody. So I understand that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the writings on the wall. And for women, they like to fix things and they like to hope for the best, regardless of all the red flags that are there. I understand you want this nigga and you want this nigga to want you, but if that ain't what he about, you can't make that be part of his morals or part of the shit that he stand on. He not, he not waiting for you. Right. <laughs> Period, point blank. I wouldn't have waited for him. You know, we already had this conversation. Look, I feel like if you get locked up for some shit I didn't know that you were into, I, that that's on you. You made a decision. I don't give a fuck how, how, how in love we are. You, you wasn't thinking. You right. wasn't thinking. You wasn't thinking about how this was going to impact us or the family or whatever the case may be. So I don't understand why everybody got to be so understanding when motherfuckers go to jail. They knew what the fuck they were doing. They knew. It's not like it's a case where, you know, police hammed them up, set them up, framed them, some shit like that. You was doing some shit. You got locked up for it. And I'm not willing to put my life on hold for anyone outside of maybe, I might got six months in me. Oh my God, six months in me. And that could be a husband, a wife. It could be somebody that I'm legally bound to. I, I just don't have it. Be like, I just don't have that in me to be sitting and waiting. Kind of like what you said, like when you get out, <laughs> I'll holler at you. If we still in that place, I ain't going to say I wouldn't maybe come visit you, or shoot you some money, uh, some shit like that. But as far as me putting my life on hold for the, for your free will, and what you decided to do with your life, I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't, I can't see me meeting anybody that's so fantastic that I would want to put my life on hold for their stupid behavior or for their get quick rich scheme or whatever, whatever. B, I just told you, I'm not doing that for $500. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta make my shit worth it. If I, if I'm risking my freedom, it has to be worth it or what my definition of, of, of worth it. Yes. If I can get $7,000 a month. You ain't fucking with six. Not six. Not six. If it wasn't like a fluctuating thing, like, like this month I can make five and this month I can make 10. Yes. But if you can make six a month, every month on the side. And they're going to be trapping like shit. It depends. A lot of money. It ain't a lot of money. It really ain't a lot of money, B. Like, I don't. 12, tax free? 12, 12 times 6. I, I feel like. That's, that's $36,000. I feel like in order for me to risk my freedom, it has to be an amount of money that is no. hard for me to get on my own. A legal way. When I say on my own. When I, to get it in a legal way. Nigga, I can, I feel like I can sell some fucking fish plates. For fucking five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about six thousand though. We said six thousand. I'll put it on the sliding scale and say I don't know, maybe, but shit have to be super fucking sweet, like mm. super fucking sweet. Mm. Because I ain't no street, I ain't no street motherfucker. I'm not down for that shit. Like I say, I leave that <laughs> to you know my brother and all that. He was down with you know doing the shit that he saw outside on the stoop. My goal was to get as far away from that shit as I possibly could and, and, and make a, a, make a life for myself where I make a decent wage and I can buy all of these things that I will with $500 a month, $1,000 a month, two, $3,000 a month. I can spend that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm just scared of jail. That's just the end of like, like no bullshit. Oh, yeah. Like that's pretty much what it is. I'm not trying. That's pretty good. Yeah, like, like I'm not struggling. I feel like it's different when you, you put in certain situations and you got to fend. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in a situation where I got to mm. fend. I'm not where I got oh, yeah. kids crying and you know what I mean? And all this shit and motherfuckers hungry and I need to make a way out of no way. No, if I do some shit like that, it's really just on some greedy shit and I just want some more money. You know what I mean? Like, right. and it have to be enough to, to make that shit worth it. Now, if it was like a one-time transaction of $5,000 mm-hmm. or $3,000, all right, cool. I might do that one time. But if this is something that I'm actively doing and can get on a radar of any sort or be used to get to somebody else, I ain't, I'm, I'm not built for that. So Mova said you can make $7,000 for a year straight. Like just one year trapping or yeah. whatever, doing whatever, doing a legal one year. Seven like times today. 12. Uh, for a year and I'm getting a consistent seven for 84 so bands. You're still working. I, I, I could yeah. do that. But it still could. And, and see, that's the other thing. Like, I've never sold drugs. However, I can understand how people get caught up in it because of the mm-hmm. money that you make. Because right. that, that one year, would you get addicted. Right. To, you get What they say? You get addicted to the how you get addicted to the yeah. cash. Yeah. So right. I got like a untaxed fucking 84 bands just sitting here. I can see how that can problem. get out of hand. <laughs> like, I could just Big see problem. how that could get out of hand. And now I'm motherfucking, uh, oh, if I make 84, let me make 200. Make 200. Mm-hmm. Let me see what else I can do. Then you getting in bed with all types of motherfuckers for, for, for this bread. And you don't know what other motherfuckers into. Who watching other motherfuckers that you getting shit from? I ain't Franklin Saint. <laughs> I don't have a tie in with the CIA. I ain't got nobody <laughs> protecting my ass. They might be looking for you. They going to use me as bait to get to you. Like. Yep. You're right. I mean, it's definitely, it, it just ain't worth the, my freedom. It's definitely the pitfall. Because you're still it. mentally not free. That shit sucks. That shit sucks. Yeah. Crash, trust me. But like I said, if I, if I ever get locked up for something, I feel like if I ever got locked up for anything for real, for real, it'll be for like some embezzlement and it'll be for like a rack of fucking money. So that when I get out of jail, mm-hmm. I can go back and get that shit. Whether it's fucking buried it's somewhere or whatever the case may be. Like I'm trying to take money so that I don't have to work or it's so much money. I can make that money work for me. So I don't have to work. No more. I ain't right. doing that shit and still got to go back to work <laughs> or find a job. <laughs> and now I'm a felon. So I really can't get a job. Yeah. Right. That shit crazy. Um, what, what, what was your max years? I told you I had six, six months. 
Who's your uh, back I shield? Probably, I mean, I at least got probably about two years in me. I say that, and, you know. What a, what is a this for? Is this for your wife, or is it for I mean, a girlfriend? Wife, I'm gonna hold my wife down for sure. Like, if she got funky tomorrow, like, nah, I'm locked in. I mean, I try my hardest not to do other shit, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna hold you down. You know what I mean? I'm gonna talk to you. Yeah, in fact, that's and, the easy part. Shit. I'm talking about well, you, is you gonna be celibate? Is you gonna be? I might, I might sell a little bit. <laughs> You know, I gotta make ends do. I gotta make. I gotta compensate for for the you know oh, wages that you man. you get. Oh, okay, got you. But honestly, I wouldn't even expect the motherfucker. Like, I wouldn't you know, even like, expect the motherfucker I, to do that for me because nah, I know I, I would. That shit. I don't want that to. Like, just hold me down. Make sure I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? As much as you can. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta live your life. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even put that on nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never do that. That shit is super selfish. Like, because it's too easy for like you know. Women especially, like, they get hollered at every fucking day. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially attractive ones. You know what I mean? If they out and about, the motherfucker definitely going to shoot their shot all the time. You know what I mean? But I think women got a little bit more willpower. For sure. And I mean, women hold people down, but that's, that's just, that's just hard to, to expect somebody to withstand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I don't expect that. Like, motherfucker got needs. Everybody got needs. You know what I mean? And I can't fulfill certain shit, especially if I'm doing a stretch. Like, I won't, you know, show me love and, and do what you can. But Would it be a just, you know though? I, mean? like, I just don't want to hear about it type shit? Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. So, if, I mean, if you got, it, like, it, five it years, you would be okay with, like, your wife moving on? Or maybe not moving on, but getting her needs met while you gone? I I mean I don't know if I'd be okay with it, but I would halfway I would understand it. You know, gotcha. what I'm saying? like gotcha. You just I mean if I don't I wouldn't like you know tell her to go out there and do right. her thing. But if she did, I, you can't be mad like you were in prison. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? Like like that shit is motherfuckers is humans. Yeah, motherfuckers you know got itches that need to be scratched. Yeah. In multiple ways. Even if she shit, I mean, it's no different. Like even if she texting a nigga or calling a nigga, going on dates and shit like That's that. That's true. That shit, you know, that should have crushed a nigga too. You know what I'm saying? Emotionally getting invested in shit, and then one thing gonna lead to another. So can't be mad at that man. He's just shouldn't have got yeah. caught. See, it's so many things tied to <laughs> seven thousand dollars. You you put a lot yeah, of things sure. in jeopardy for 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 that. Um. <laughs> well, Medici's not holding or. A, Admitting that he would not hold Yandy down is little shit. Uh, it's kind of in the middle, <laughs> a little bit. It's like both of them. Um, I, I listen. I respect, even though I thought the answer was fucked up. I respect a person's honesty. I respect right. honesty, and at the end of the day, no matter what goes down with me and literally anybody, whether it's platonic romantic whatever i just want to respect you at the end of the day you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like and so but i still think it's <laughs> i still feel like it's a situation i definitely would have lied so um <laughs> yeah, so i think that is i think that, i think that is kind of shit because you broke that girl because she she was going yeah. around screaming from the rooftops that you was gonna hold her down I think she was at the Black Lives Matter rally, rally saying for you. Yeah, Anderson. you remember when the when the fucking prisoners had that fucking. I was just joking. She was. I was just joking. But she, I, uh, like, free I mean, Anderson. she didn't say free but yeah, I mean, but that when she protesting at these prisons and shit, that's on his behalf. Oh yeah, about uh, yeah. their living conditions and shit like that, like free Mendeces. She had the Breonna Taylor shit with the free Mendeces shit though. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, that nigga then fucked up some shit. Um, real quick, Justin Bieber is facing dreadlocks, uh, dreadlocks, backlash for his dreadlocks in his latest string of cultural appropriation. Um, y'all know Justin Bieber been trying to change his image, uh, since he is allegedly sober. I don't know why anybody sober would get their hair like that, but um, for being sober and being married and all that. Um, he got dreads, uh, also known as locks, historically worn by members of the black community. Um, and the crazy thing about it is it's the same hairstyle that many black people get discriminated against for right now. You have, uh, coaches and refs cutting niggas dreads off at wrestling matches. You got kids that can't go to school because they got dreads. Um, but Justin Bieber said he's going to get him some. Um, Justin Bieber said that 
I am inspired by black culture. I have benefited off of black culture. My style, my dance, the way I sing, my fashion has been influenced by black culture. I am committed to using my platform from this day forward to learn to speak up about racial injustice and systemic oppression. And to identify ways to be part of this much needed change. Now, Justin Bieber been getting his ass handed to him by the black community for a couple months now, because in March, he released his album called Justice, where he utilized Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King's uh infamous quotes about injustice everywhere. Um, He also used audio of Martin Luther King on his album talking about in, um, social injustice. Here's the problem. None of the album is about social injustice. Like hmm. not, the album is his regular fucking poppy ass shit that he do. Um, are you cool with this? Is it pro- is it appropriation or is it supporting? Uh, I don't give a fuck about Justin Bieber. Um, he's just a weird like he's just a white man. Like he is a clear white man, very yeah, a white much man. a white man. He don't think he's a white man like he really is. Yeah, he's just a white man. I mean, they've been making, you know, white, it's always the whites that come in on our, you know, infringe upon our culture. So I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I hope, you know, I, I like that Peaches song. Though. I do like that Peaches song. That should be jamming. Um, I, I don't think but, I have, I, I, I know I haven't had any, uh, real feelings about like either way. It's not, it hasn't been like good or bad to me. Yeah, like, I think I don't really. Yeah, it's kind of been like, okay, enough. like Justin Bieber's song. Um, I don't hate them though. I mean, the songs I don't, I don't necessarily hate it, but I do hate that we let people dip in and out of our culture when we feel like it. Justin Bieber went above and beyond to distance himself when he was at his blackest and he was getting in all that twist. fucking trouble. He was hanging with Twist and all them. And he thought he was a little black guy. Then he got in all them trouble and then he was starting to be held accountable and then he distanced himself from all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then when he feel like it's, he could sell a record with it or he can look cool allegedly because his dress look fucking horrible. They don't even look good. Um, he feel like, you know, Chet Hanks, like it's going to be a white boy summer and shit like that. I don't feel like we should allow this shit to happen. When I say I feel like we shouldn't allow this shit to happen is because I feel like nigga need to be brought to the carpet and, and, and held accountable for the shit if you're gonna be with us be with us you don't get to go in and out because black people are supporting a lot of the shit that justin bieber does like you said like that peaches song you know that shit fire. um you talking about and i like yum yummy yummy was fire too um it 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 it, it, it bothers me because i feel like a lot of celebrities do that a white celebrities they dip in and out when it's convenient. J-Lo do that shit too. And J-Lo is bae. Mm-hmm. And she do that shit too. I'll be, I'll be calling her ass down to the carpet too. She want to be, J-Lo is whatever color of the person that she with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see how fucking Hispanic she was when she was with Mark Anthony. And then she was super yeah. white when she was with Ben. She was black as fuck when she was with Puffy. I feel like, uh, yeah. fucking A-Rod kind of evened her out a little bit where she could have kind of rocked in any, any community but I just hate that like don't come fuck with us when you can sell some records because you know we we popping we pop culture we are culture so all y'all be with us and you know it's, 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 it's those other people in the industry especially the males that's like oh that's my man B she can do whatever you want to do like I mean I ain't got nothing to do with that I mean, it's the same way that they do like Kanye and other motherfuckers that doing fuck shit and they don't want to call them to task, call them to the carpet and say, nah, that shit fucked up. And I feel like if somebody of a particular stature or status within the hip hop community called Justin Bieber to the carpet, I feel like it, it would make some type of impact, but they ain't ready for that. They, they, they not ready, ready for that. Um, do you feel like Justin Bieber is super talented? No, he can sing. I mean, he can sing really well for a white guy. I feel like just we can make another Justin Bieber. Like Justin Bieber was pretty much created. You know what I'm saying? They took this little white boy that could hold a note, and then you know they put him under the the, the tutelage of all of these black artists to kind of develop him. 
and show them how to dance. Mm. Justin Bieber can't dance like that. He do just no. enough to get by for a white boy. His singing yeah, ain't he, amazing. He can, like, just, yeah, he can sing. He can he can be manufactured just, like the yeah. K-pop niggas you was telling me about. Like we can make another Justin for Bieber sure. easy. I don't no, feel like he's no, no. like uncomparable at all. Like we can easily make another right. Justin Bieber. Um, did you see the dress though? Oh nah. well, when you get a moment, look at them. They're ultra trash. Like you know, white dress be trash anyway. But he got the like right. white dress, and they like when niggas be growing dress, and they like in that medium stage where they look super weird. They ain't long, they ain't short. They oh, in that yeah, dumb yeah, yeah. fucking stage. But he's just kind of like sticking out, like like uh Rick and Morty, like the <laughs> like fucking Rick. Is it Rick or Morty? Which one's the grandpa? I've you never, never seen, seen Rick or Morty ever in my life. Rick and Morty is like everywhere. I see episodes randomly. I'm not a fan of it, but I know Rick and Morty. But that's what he looks like. Justin Bieber, dreadlocks, little shit. Uh, I guess it's shit. I, I feel like it's shit. Get your own shit. Rock some white shit. Do your white shit. Or if you're going to be with us, be with us. Just don't do it when it's fucking convenient, you fucking appropriator. Um, You ready to give out some advice? Yep. All right, we about to go into Ain't Shit and Two Cents. Ain't Shit and Two Cents is our listener letter segment where we give advice to listeners uh, who clearly don't care to get advice from uh, intoxicated people, high people, all of that. Y'all know who we are. Y'all know who we do. Um, This letter today is from Nichelle. And Nichelle says, I'm a huge fan of the show. And yes, I have an issue with you all moving to every two weeks, but I won't complain about that right now. Because I want you to read my email. LOL. I used to go to girl in the shell. How she spelled it? With a K. No shell? Yeah. Because <laughs> I call it K in Oh, it was like a silent K and shit? Mm, uh, this person spells it N A C H E L L E. Yeah, it was just a word. K that, so maybe it's not her. Mm-hmm. K in the shell. I, I call it that now. K in the shell. <laughs> I called her that before I came with Shell. Yeah. Because I show, I was like, why is it there? Black people got to be stopped. <laughs> no, we don't. Black I people got to be stopped it. with these silent Ks and apostrophes. Listen, I am a child of the A at the end and the apostrophe and the law. So it's just a lot of yeah, black all got, over you my shit. Mad nigga shit going on your Fuck yeah. <laughs> you, got mad, nigga, you got mad nigga shit. Oh, 100%. Shit. All so of our names you. are mad nigga. And my mom and dad's name are as basic as fuck. William right. and fucking Mary. So my mom, like, I'm putting all the sauce. <laughs> I'm putting all the sauce right. on the names. You know, I love it that I'm at an age right now that you can kind of determine how old somebody is by their name. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, you can tell how old somebody name is. It's going to be real fucked up in the future because you got these girls naming they, they kids like Sophia and, uh, <laughs> like, um, old people names now like old, Olivia mm-hmm. like all yeah. them names coming back so you ain't gonna know how old people is but I know if I hear a Shamika a Keisha uh sure. Lene they definitely, they definitely <laughs> right you definitely 37. 35 plus cause I don't hear no more Tamikas and shit I don't like all the Tamikas I don't you don't hear no baby name Tamika ain't no Tamikas or no Lakeisha's or no LaShawn shit like that Lakeisha I, it was a lady's name Barbara why would you name your child Barbara that's fucked up yeah but <laughs> I'm definitely not naming it. yeah if it's gonna be an old name it's gonna be some fly shit <laughs> like Barbara's not Barbara fly ain't fly Mary's Barbara not ain't been fly. fly like we got grandma Keisha's yeah. now we yeah, got grandma's fine. name Keisha that 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 is so right. fucking well. Sorry, my bad, Michelle. Let's let's get back to your letter. Uh, she said, "I was twenty seven year old female from PG Maryland. Shout out to PG. Oh yeah, it's definitely not, definitely <laughs> not my my my. Book. Not your not <laughs> not your K Michelle. She said, yeah, I received sure. my master's degree two years ago in biomechanical biomedical engineering. I current you smart, I smart. currently work in my field and make pretty decent money." Since the pandemic and quarantine and all of that, I've been thinking a lot and trying to understand if I'm really happy or if I'm just executing the life my parents dreamt of. I really have a passion for the arts. I really enjoy drama and acting. I've starred in numerous plays and low budget movies throughout high school and college. I would really like to move to Atlanta 
or LA to pursue my dream. However, I don't want to fall on my face trying to pursue an acting career. And I know my parents would be highly upset with me if I chose such an unpredictable slash non-traditional route. Do y'all feel pursuing an acting career at 27 is just like a 30 year old pursuing a rap career? How did y'all decide on y'all careers? And would you leave those careers to pursue media full time? Any advice would help. Thank you. Nichelle T. Well, damn. Um, that was a well constructed question. <laughs> um, she is a biomedical engineer. Clearly, yeah. Really <laughs> smart than this. Well done. She has wrote. She has written a thesis <laughs> to her day. Um, but to I guess the first part of it for me, um, yes, pursue. If you don't have any kids and you don't really have any yeah. obligations, you can do whatever the fuck true. you want and every whenever that the fuck is you very want true. to. Do. So. Yeah, I mean, pursue that shit, man. Like, I mean, Ava DuVernay, she ain't become a film producer since she's like yeah. 35. You know what I mean? And then she linked up with Oprah and is has made some, you know, and got Queen Sugar yeah. rolling and rolling. Got her own, like, the own network is her yeah. old shit. You know what I mean? And and she's done some some great, I don't know if it was 35. It was, it was older. At least it, was, it was older. Yeah, she was 30 something yeah. for sure. She was an older woman. As far you know as mean? when like, you're pursuing your career and shit, yeah. For sure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if I think talent is talent, and especially like, um, it's not like music based where talent is is doper when you're young and shit, and it's, you know you're trying to establish it and and grow a fan base like that. Whereas you know, movies and entertainment, you know, they gonna need somebody to play a twenty seven yeah. black, black person somewhere. Or you know what I'm saying? So like, if you good, yeah. you good. So I definitely, you know, if if you have a passion for it, you can always do that and if you know if it doesn't work out you can you know do the do do your your day job at, during the day yeah. and kind of figure it out yourself um and in terms of what was the other part um, how did i i didn't what i do now i just landed on my shit like i didn't I, I applied for a job and thought it was something totally different and it just worked out to be like the best decision yeah. in my life career-wise um would I leave that to go to do media full-time it would have to be seven thousand dollars a um, month <laughs> sure. it would definitely have to be, i would definitely have to be making a like you know equal yeah. or a very s small percentage less than what i'm making now because i have yeah, i got a family that. i got a big ass family so um my shit is a little different uh obviously and insurance and all that shit like that so it would have to be a substantial amount um but yeah i wouldn't i mean even I, i'll say this even i wouldn't even if i was making i don't know maybe twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars less. I think I'd still be able to thug it yeah. out just because of the potential. It just depends on what the opportunities were for me in terms of media. Cause I know if I were to get somewhere and, uh, you know, doing what I'm doing this, for example, just talking shit every day, I could do a pretty <laughs> good job of that. You know what I mean? Back. To get paid. So I think I'd, I'd, it would yield benefits down the line. Yeah. Um, so I would, you know, motherfucker, you know, 60 grand or 50 grand or yeah. some shit like that. It would be it would be a, a very uh, difficult decision, but I would try to see you know because I can always do claims. I can always that's do claims very true. You well, can always go back, huh? Yeah, I that's always true. Do claims like it's claims is never that's going very anywhere, true. You know what I mean? And I got commercial insurance experience, so like that shit is even more robust and more detailed. So and it's not a whole lot of you know experienced people in my field, and plus yeah. and plus I'm black, so motherfuckers be needing to get quotas mm -hmm. in there, and it's very rare that. You know, it's not a lot of black men in my field and my industry and shit. So when you can do well, you can mm -hmm. do well. So all that said, yes, I might can entertain it. It would just have to be, you know, I would have to look at the, the end goal um, and the potential that it could, you know, manifest itself into. I think I think all of that is is great information. Um, I like the fact that, you know, like you said, you can always go back to that. Um, you have a master's degree in biomedical engineering. Um, you from PG County, so I'm going to assume that you're black. <laughs> you may not be, but I'm going to assume that you're black. You're a 27 year old female, black female with a biomedical engineer degree, and you're working yeah. in your field. You're You'll whole, be able to go back whole to that. Dragon. <laughs> you're a whole dragon. Right. Like, Listen, I feel as though, like, like B Hill said, I, first of all, even if you are a 30 year old rapper, right? How passionate are you about that? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel like it could pop off? Do you have anybody else to take care of? You know what I'm saying? We clown motherfucking 30 year old rappers, 40 year old rappers and whatever, but stranger things have happened. 
If you believe in yourself. Yeah, DMX got on when he was 29. Jay-Z was 26. You know what I'm saying? Like, these yeah. niggas ain't 18. And, and, and you know what else, B? I feel like... It, and two chains. It's so crazy that we as children who don't know shit are kind of forced to decide what, what we want to be when we grow up. When we don't know about shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know about teachers and cops and firemen and, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the basic shit. You ain't know about no fucking no claims person or no fucking ethics manager right. or no fucking, even fucking biomedical engineer. I'm sure that's probably something you decided on once you read, like, the brochure or, you know what I'm saying? Or you yeah. saw what your strengths were or you just had an interest, right? So, like... You definitely didn't see that in a <laughs> Right. So, like, even for myself, like, growing up, my parents told me I was going to become a, a, a lawyer. <laughs> like, you don't know no better. So you're just like, okay, right. I can do that. Cool. Then go mm -hmm. through college. I'm fucking pre-law. And then, like, it gets to, like, my senior year. And I'm just, like, thinking about that shit, really looking at the profession, like, seriously. And I had, like, a um, I had a mentor when I was young that was a divorce mm -hmm. attorney. And I just thought her shit was so fly. She come pick me up in a fucking red convertible and shit. So that was another thing. I was like, oh, okay, be a lawyer. I can be rich. And people always think lawyers are rich. Right. Lawyers are not rich. <laughs> Some are. There are a lot of broke Depends. fucking lawyers out here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for them damn students. And lawyers. public yeah. defenders. They don't make no fucking money. Like, motherfuckers don't yeah. be making money. But I went through that whole thing and decided, you know what, I'm going to go to grad school. This ain't something I want to do. I'm going to go. I'm going to get, you know, and uh, get my get my degree, get my master's degree, because I knew I wanted to do that. At first, I was going to go to law school, and I was just like, no, but I do know that I want a secondary degree. So I, I went and got that shit, and the funny thing about it is what my major is and what I was doing, I still ended up in the legal field, right? So you don't right. necessarily mm -hmm. have to do this exact job, you know, and, and kind of figuring out what's good for you. Um, I Honestly, the 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 best thing is that if you don't have no children, you don't have no obligations, live your fucking life until that status changes. Do whatever you want to do. Get you a job. I always feel like you can do shit on the side though, right? <laughs> so like, I'm doing this pod and I have a and I have a full-time job. You know what I'm saying? If this pod or just things that I were passionate about were being fruitful as far as me making income off that shit, I'm with you. Be like, I would take a pay cut to do something yeah. that I really like. Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, people are less like, well, do you like your job? Do you like what you do? And my disclaimer is always, if I have to work for someone else in a corporate setting, yes, I like my job. <laughs> However, <laughs> my goal is always never to work for no motherfucking body. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not talking okay. about like these people who like, I want to start my own business because I don't like having a boss, but they don't have a work ethic to <laughs> actually run a business themselves. Some people are leaders and some people need to be led. Some people need to be told what to do. You need to be told what to do at your job in order for you to do that shit. Like for some people. So how you think you're going to go out here with abundance of time? And execute if you know that you're not, you're a procrastinator, you're this, you're that, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely say go out there and try it. You can always go back. Um, my career, like I say, I definitely, if, if I could, I enjoy doing this. I do this anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do this anyway. So I might as well record it. Y'all seem to like the shit. You know what I'm saying? We have people who yeah. Enjoy the shit that come out of our mouth, <laughs> no matter how great or ridiculous it may be. We have that. So, yes, I would. My advice is to make sure that you can support yourself. So if you got a job, I don't know how much somebody in your field make. I'm just going to say a flat number because you've been out of school for two years. I'm going to just say something like, you know, $70,000, $75,000. Make sure your lifestyle is less than that if you're going to move and do something that pays less. Because at the end of the day, yeah. you still got to be able to support yourself. I always be like, do that shit on the side until it's producing enough fruit for you to leave the other shit. I wouldn't say drop that shit just cold turkey. You can probably find a, a um, biomedical 
something in the biomedical field in L.A. or Atlanta. You can do that in a day. Yeah, yeah. Go to auditions on the weekends or whenever the case may be. And, you know, gauge it from there. That's my opinion. That's what I feel like you should do. Try and gauge it. Because at the end of the day, life is short. People think that shit long. That shit ain't long. It's not long at all. When you look back, when you look back on shit right now, you're like, damn, wait. So that was 1995 that shit happened because it just seemed like yesterday that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? Like Day, Days are long, years are short. Exactly. So you only get one of these things. So you need to do what's making you happy. Never live someone else's life. What The, the dreams that you have for me, that's yours. That's your dream. That don't have nothing to do with me. But if you're dependent upon your parents for any type of money right. or something, you might have to think about it differently. But it doesn't sound like that is the case for you. So I say go out, pursue your dreams if you feel like you're good at it. And if it don't work, you have a biomedical engineering degree, sis. Can't nobody take that from you. And I don't know the stats behind that, but I'm sure it's not a bunch of use in that field. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely, somebody quote us. (laughs) You definitely will get hired on the strength of being a quote. Yeah, yeah. Um. So for some diversity and inclusion. and But that's if the company is down for inver- diversity and inclusion. Because, True. trust me, I know that they all can, some of them can talk, but they don't be doing shit about that. Um, any other advice for Nichelle? Nah. Good luck, Nichelle. Let us know, you know, what you decide and let us know what projects you've been in. Maybe we can look at it and evaluate it <laughs> and give some more insight on if we think you the shit or not. Not that our opinion matters, but, um, you know, let us know. And if any of y'all want any of this top notch advice from Dr. Hill, the be a silent, boom. Let's start the bill. Damn, I still no, got it wrong. You are this. I cannot grasp this concept for shit, my nigga. (laughs) Doctor Bill, the H is silent. Doctor Bill, the H is silent. It's only been five years. It's only been a long time that I can't get his name. But yes, Doctor Bill, the H is silent. I still feel like that shit. (laughs) You said Doctor Bill, but no, but what you said? I said Doctor Hill, and the B is silent. Oh, I thought you said okay. <laughs> I thought you said Doctor Doctor Bill with the B is silent. Like, what? Yeah, nah, Doctor Bill and the H is silent. I'm gonna For get it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get it one day. And and new and new host. <laughs> Facts. I right, I'll take that. I'll take that shot. I'll take that shot. Uh, it's the ancient show at gmail dot com. Y'all can write it. That's an X for the I will be. Let's wrap this bitch up with this free smoke. Free smoke. But she can remember that. <laughs> hey, yes, I say this all the time. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, because you don't say Dr. Bill either. Right. I stay <laughs> away from it. So funny thing about me, there are yeah, certain, so I have a friend whose last name, so I see things in my head. Like I see the name and the way you say it does not go along with the spelling. So I avoid saying her name, last name all the fucking time. Cause it's like some German shit. It ain't even like yeah. no black shit. It's like some German shit. Mm. And it looks different. So I always avoid that shit. So that's probably what yep. I do with, you know, with your day. But free smoke, free smoke, man. Right. Free smoke is where we talk about any hot button issues, personal topics. It could be anything from politics to petty. And today's topic is hip hop is legends. And what can we do, if anything? So since our last podcast, several things have happened in the hip hop community. Rest in peace, DMX. In our last podcast, we were just trying to figure out if DMX had really passed away or not. Um, DMX has passed away since our last podcast. Not only has DMX passed away, Black Rob has passed away from strokes and years of health issues. We had fucking Shop G pass away. Um, he was found in a hotel. Um, they're not quite sure what he passed away from the last time I checked. Um, and also I add into this, even though not a legend, we still know of him. Uh, your boy Cam Cohart died of an overdose. Oh yeah. Um, we know Cam Cohart. Well, I know Cam Cohart from, uh, the baby beating him up in the Louis store. Um, which they said was fake. I just found that out. 
I wonder was it fake or not? Because I heard stuff about that too. Did the baby say it was fake? I don't know. I just read on one of the little blurbs. I, I don't know a nigga who's willing to embarrass shit. himself like that. <laughs> but hey. Yeah, ass out ain't nah. I'm not getting assed out for nobody. Yeah, like for a couple hundred for about ten thousand, you know, followers or some shit. Post yeah, that. you looking like a pussy, like, no, I'm not doing that. But there has been um conversations uh about drug addiction, uh health, all of these things, like in the hip hop community, there has been uh talks of a union. And, and, and things of that na things of that nature. Um, do we? And when I say we, I'm not necessarily talking about me. You, I'm just talking about hip hop as as a whole, as a black medium. Are we? Is there something that should be done for these people? Like we, they talked about, like a union. Um, is 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 there things that we yeah, should I be doing? So. But like the DMX is in the. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's us that we should do it. I think it's the industry that they're right. in that should do it. Like it should be some type of you know retirement plan and and you know like you know like players association. You know what I'm saying? A rappers union. You know what I'm saying? Like where they just it's like a an aggregate fund that you know people contribute like the SAG. Like mm. you know when people retired actors and shit like that, they you know pony up their money and it goes yeah, part of their a part of their contribution, but it's, you know, for the greater good of the whole community. Yeah. And shit, you know what I mean? So I, I didn't, I didn't know yeah. that SAG does that. Um, but I think yeah. that that is a great idea. Cause where be where I was on the issue, I was a little bit conflicted. Right. And I'm kind of like, if niggas got money, it's up to these niggas to secure their future. Right. But then I think about, that's true too. But, but when I think about shit, like, addiction and drug abuse and like health and shit like that like I really feel like the industry and and, and, and not even just the hip hop industry the industry where black people are dominant in that industry or has a significant standing in that industry and when I say that I mean hip hop or music just music period because we span way beyond hip hop but also when we're talking about um sports and things like that where you have these guys mainly guys um women too but th i feel like this impact black men the most is you have these guys who come from nothing a lot of times and then they got a whole bunch of money right they don't know how to manage this money they don't understand what entourage is actually cost. Ask MC Hammer. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand, um, you know, yeah, you buying all these cars. Majority of them are leased. You got to pay all these fucking leases every month. Or you're actually buying cars straight out where you're paying 100 here, 150 here, uh, 75 there. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we need to create some type of educational pipeline for these people to understand with money because black people, we are not fiscally educated in our community. One, because our parents don't fucking know, so they can't teach us what the fuck they don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're not taught that. We're purposely not taught those types of things. I feel like financial literacy is the current version of just literacy period they didn't want us to read knowledge right. is power if you talk to anybody with a little bit of money the first thing they will say is either get you a business accountant or you need to understand the tax code yep. that's where people that's how the rich stay rich because they understand the tax code the tax code shouldn't be this big complicated thing but it's purposely complicated you gotta have the money Right. in order to decipher that shit and understand why you would be a Jeff Bezos and not pay no taxes. Yep. You know, I feel like we need to, we need to have that type of thing because I like your idea of having it like the SAG and having it like an aggregate because this could go for financial literacy, but this could also go for health and motherfuckers. Mm. 
mm-hmm. you know, don't have health insurance or whatever the case may be. It's money there to put them into rehab programs or to get them the basic care that they need. I, I'm not sure exactly all the ins and outs of like Black Rob's issue. But I know a lot of that was being like put on Puffy. And granted, I mean, Puffy don't have the best reputation. However, is it his responsibility to take care of a Black Rob or make sure a Black Rob has the shit that he needs? In your opinion? So, it's funny because I was listening to something and somebody was like, but yeah, it's bad boy family. Mm. And I was like, bad boy yeah. for life. And I was like, well, yeah. you put it like that. Yes, he does. Um, but I mean, contractually, no, obviously, because, you know, in the business, like, you know, you do business with somebody and that, that business is ending. You don't have any obligations, you know, financially, you know, or contractually yeah. to, to do anything for that person. Um, but you know, this is the, the heart in you. I mean, if I, if I'm a billionaire and you know, this person was instrumental in helping me get to my billion, I think I could throw them a yeah. you know, hundred grand, 200 grand to get this shit, you know, get them. Even if it right, wasn't you know, uh, handing them money directly, it's just paying the yeah. bill or. Yeah, help them out here and there. You know what I mean? Put them in a house. You know, like the thing of Black Rob was homeless. He shouldn't yeah. be homeless. You know what I mean? Like, he shouldn't be homeless. But I mean, you also shouldn't be homeless. That's very homeless. true. You shouldn't have squandered your money. So, I mean, I can't, you know, if that's everybody the case, grown. You know, unfortunately, yeah, you can't, you can't save everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause motherfuckers make decisions and shit like that at the same time. Like, you know, it's, I got friends that aren't in the best financial spot, but like, it's not my job to, you know, spot. like, yeah, like, you know, I mean, I would help them if push came to shove and they need it for sure. But at the same time, like, it's not like a yeah. charity case and I'm responsible. Like, you're, you're a grown ass man the same way. But if you, you know, if you're sick and you need some Facts. help with some yeah. shit, you know, I'll definitely help you out. But I'm not going to be continuing. Like, it's not, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be doing that shit I, uh, obligatorily. Mm. I don't know if that's the word, but. <laughs> hey, go with the feeling. Go with the feeling. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't necessarily feel like. See, here's the type of person I am with everything. I understand a life comes at you fast type shit. I can help you on that. You usually got your shit together, right. and you in a you in a bind, you in a predicament, you sick, you something like that. I'm I'm here. I'm I'm here to help you. You my friend. I'm here to help. You. However, on the flip side of that, <laughs> I'm not about to be an enabler either. I'm not about to be a person where you go out here and do whatever the fuck you want with your money and then you come in to me for help. I'm not that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not the person to call because you got kicked out your apartment because you didn't pay your bills. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the person that you call because you just lost your job and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills and you need to kick it with me for a little while. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that person. You know, and, and you lost your jo- job through no fault of your own. You ain't about to go cuss out your boss and then right. come live with me like that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. got off. If it was like a reduction in force. <laughs> facts, yeah. facts. There was there, so there was a conversation with Master P. I think it was on the Breakfast Club, where yeah. Master P was saying no one asks Jimmy Iovine these questions. Basically, basically, he said to 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 paraphrase. And drill that down. He basically said that people always asking him and Puff and I guess Hove and the other niggas who have made significant strides in the music industry. But they never ask the motherfuckers who making the real money. Even though they yeah, making money, they, ma- they making real money. What are your thoughts on that? I totally agree with that. Like, you know, I mean, that just goes to the, to the, you know, to the, fucking slavery shit again you know what i mean like we always you know tearing down one another in terms of that but yeah i mean absolutely these motherfuckers are made for every billion that fucking puff got you know them niggas got seven yeah you know what i mean so they they're more financially capable to certainly take care and and that the music industry for not for nothing it's been you know predicated on the backs of blacks again you know what i mean we make, that we, is we make the greatest music for them. <laughs> you know what i mean no that so, is facts but yeah. see here here was my issue with it be. This was my issue with the statement. It's because, nigga, you really think some white motherfuckers about to help some motherfuckers? Like, come on, y'all. We gotta help us. So for you to be like, nah, not my problem, ask that white man. 
Because what? That works. I don't know if he was saying it's not my problem, but he was like, he said, don't ask always, me. All the problems are mine. Yeah. But he said all the problems That's are true. mine. Like, I, you see what I'm saying? Like, if somebody continually like, nigga, like, okay, yeah, but I done got them did X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z numerous times. These things got some a good amount of money over there too, and they made a lot of money just the same, if not more, off you than I did. So, it, like, I'm not opposed to you asking me, but spread the ass. Yeah, out. I kind of got you know the I'm, I'm opposed to you asking me because you don't ask them niggas. That's my that was my kind of takeaway from that. Because he been asking me that sometimes. I mean, but <laughs> so that, that and, and like, that's fuck. where I feel like you craft the message a little bit better. Because the way again, mm. I haven't seen a million Master P interviews him being asked this question. So I'm only going by this one interview that he had. No, I'm just, I'm not yeah. even talking about that necessarily. I'm talking about like him being asked yeah. in life. I'm sure so many people done came like, P, P, can you do this? P, can you like, God damn, who can P ask? Like who the fuck Santa Claus go to when he needs some? Listen, you know I mean? that's like, why I, I honestly shit. feel like, like if I had money like that, money like that, nigga, sure I do. You need to get on this payroll though. <laughs> like, yeah, like, work, like you need sure. to figure out what your job is so that I can write this shit off. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I can help, but I just, I, I just feel like this is the reason you've been granted your blessings, Master P, Jay Z, Puff Daddy, because them niggas ain't gonna do it. So we gotta put some of our people in, 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 yeah. in a position <sighs> to, one, help out, and two, possibly broker those deals with those white people that you're saying. That, yes, but I can't tell. Oh, no, not at all. But you, but you can't, but you can't be the same. Just like, just like Puffy's letter to corporate America. Nigga, you corporate America, nigga. No doubt. Yeah, that's a fact. You right, nigga, you corporate America. Like, you're, so, you're. like, I, I hate when people try to, black people, and they may not see it like this, but you're using black people to get your money. You know what I'm saying? You right. might not be getting the Jimmy IV money, but did you, did that, there ain't no small change you got either. Master P, there ain't no small right. change you got either. You know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't like no light well, shit. Master P said he, he got like, he got the, the noodles. <laughs> yeah, he got the wrap the snack. The, the, the. Yeah, them shit's high in blood pressure. I mean, sodium and shit. I saw them hey, joints in the know? store the other day. Like, I mean, yeah, I got the boosty shit downstairs. I, I don't eat them. that. So I don't eat them type of noodles. My my siblings always ate them type noodles. I never ate them type noodles. And then once I got older and read the shits, I'm like, this shit ain't even made out of food. Yeah. Like, it ain't even no right. food on the label, my nigga. The closest you get into food is that maybe some flour. That shit, <laughs> that shit is fucking the worst. And you putting that shit inside of your body. God, there should be butts putting bitches on some bread. Listen, I'm talking about noodles and shit. I was just having a conversation before I started this show, and um, somebody posted a uh, um, somebody posted a check, and they was just like, "Oh, took this girl out in Atlanta. This is her bill by itself. The bill was two hundred fifty dollars by itself for her, right?" And so, uh-huh. like, I send it to some friends of mine, and one of my friends sends me a receipt. <laughs> Sends me a receipt of them going out uh the on Monday, right? And it was five of them motherfuckers, and their receipt came up to thirteen hundred dollars. Mm, <laughs> and I, I, I made a joke when I first sent the joint. I was like, oh yeah, they took the, you know what I'm saying, somebody took XYZ out for this bill to be this high. And she came back like, oh, nigga, we, you know what I'm saying? We do this. We do this. We did this on Monday. And I looked at that shit. I said, oh, yeah, consider me the Section 8 person because I'm not about to spend. That's, that's, (laughs) listen, that is special occasion meals for me. That's a special occasion meal for me. Like fucking steaks and fucking two lobster tails and fucking, fucking $30 drinks and all that shit. Hey, yeah, if you get it, get your money. I Listen, I feel like everybody should do with their money what they want to. But my whole yeah, thing about it, sure. I always had this conversation be like, I be thinking like, what, what okay. would I do if I had it? I mean, I could spend it. But I'm talking about if this was just like excessive disposable income, I'm still like, yo, I spent fucking $300 on one meal. I'm holding that shit in. We not, I'm not letting yeah. that go. Yeah. <laughs> $300 for one person by myself on a Monday? My nigga. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's stupid. You know how many girls Bro, you, you, know, you know how many shoes I can get? <laughs> like, you know I can... Do you know I can go to the outlet and no, ball no, out, my nigga? That's my thing. Yeah, I'm more of a true. tangible person. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. had conversation about flowers. It's been sweet. I've gotten flowers various occasions. However, if you about to spend a hundred dollars, just give me the money. Or give me a gift card to get some kicks yeah. or some shoes or pay a bill or you know what I mean? Like flowers die. I don't yeah. need no hundred dollar flowers. I appreciate you, baby. Thank you for sending it. I don't need that though. <laughs> have, have motherfucking uh foot locker delivered to my house. Or or something. No, no get that shit to Georgia Power. You send me the Maui Wowies. Send me the Maui Wowies. <laughs> Which one is that? That's one with the, the, fl- with the uh, floral print on it? Two shoes and one. It's just so fire. Wait. <sighs> so two shoes and one? I ain't peeped that. I thought it was two separate pairs of shoes. What is it? It's a rip away nah. shit or it's a... Yep. I hate them shits. You know I hate rip away shoes. I hate crazy. shoes where you gotta do a this bunch of work crazy. to discover what they supposed to look like. I ain't got time for this all that shit. shit. But I mean, they skater shoes, so technically they supposed to like, as you skate, like they tear away. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what dunks are. Like SB dunks and shit. So they SB dunks. Some shit is so crazy. Yeah. I listen, but nigga, I don't even see you so in no flower shoes. I, I definitely don't. What you gonna wear them shits with? What you gonna wear them shits What's your outfit with these flower shoes? I don't know, I that <laughs> yeah, I don't even see your swag wearing no fucking that's flower crazy. shoes, and they and they not bad looking shoes. That's not what I'm saying. That's just that's crazy. They ain't that's up on my list crazy. like they up on your list, but I, I can't even see you. I feel like you coming out with some flower shoes. You might feel like they fucking impede on your masculinity. They like they Maui Wowies though. They like they like weed shoes. They they not even flower. They like they plant. Oh, I thought I saw like Maui literal Maui. flowers. Yeah, it's like the flower from the bud mm. type shit. Them shits is beautiful. They like them shit three sixty online now. I ain't getting them because I ain't I can't pay over retail for no shoes. But them shits fire though. God, they fire. Shoe rant. I absolutely gotta get these fucking all patent left the bread Jordan ones. And you was hating. You, you and two other on? people was hating. And I told y'all all the same thing. It's just reality. Like, it's not listen, it's I just, can be whatever I want to be. I need to manifest my destiny and y'all will not impede on my manifestation. I had somebody today. I was just like, look, I know you got the shoe plug, but again, I'm willing to pay. I'm still not willing to pay that amount over retail. Like I was like, I got 200. That's all I got. Cause I know the shoe going to be like 130 cause I come in the full size run. So if it come in a full size run, then in my size is going to be like 130. I got 200. Yeah, so if your people sure, got, man. if I got them shits for less than 200, holla. But that's all I got. This shit's so stupid. I hate sneakers, man. Like, I be hitting shit I don't even really want to hit on and shit. And then I want to, uh, nah, I'm I surprised you didn't get really them want. Carolina but Blue so- Force today. I tried. A lot of them shits <laughs> even come out today. They be throwing me off. It is, it's Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday is a third, uh, weird drop day. Was there any significance to today? Or Nike? Uh, not that I know of. I'm not sure. I want them try. I hope I get the Travis Scotts too on Friday, but I know. Ooh, that's gonna be hard to get. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. I already. These shits is crazy, man. These Maui Wowies. Good gracious. Yeah, I want you to get them joints. I want you to get them joints just so I can see if you gonna wear them shit. I ain't getting them, but them shits fire though. I ain't getting them. I would have if they would at retail. I would have got them shit. I probably would have sold them though because them shits going for like shit four eighty right now. I definitely would have sold them bitches. But them bitches hard though. Yeah. Um What are the what are the top I guess like three or four things that if if the hip hop community could supply that in whatever way, however it's funded, what do you think are like the top couple things that is like required or needed in order to sustain healthy legends? In the hip hop community, I think just health insurance yeah. first and foremost. Like I think people just just be entitled to health insurance, like that, you know, and life insurance, and making people make sure people yeah. got wills and you know assets lined up and shit like that. I think that that's the most that know, should be standard uh, integral. That should be standard yeah, when you sign your but shit. Not, so. But I get it; they trying to get you for as cheap as possible and work yeah. your ass to death. Listen, I just feel like in in twenty twenty one, niggas shouldn't be signing these slave deals no more. Too much education out here. This is not Tony Braxton and mm. TLC and 
everybody from the 90s who fucking got fucked over. People still getting fucked over. I feel like. Motherfuckers be broke, man. You got to realize motherfuckers coming from nothing. Ain't like, no need in working and still having on. nothing, though. We talking about these motherfuckers. They didn't have no money. Yeah, but you, it's, it's, yeah, you saying that, but when you ain't got shit and a motherfucker offering you $15,000 and, and a chance to live your dream. You know, and you got zero and ain't and at the crib and got four or five people that stay with you. And, you you know what I'm saying? Like situations and scenarios like, you know, people prey on that. You know what I mean? Like they take advantage of certain shit. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. Yeah, that is very true. But at the end yeah. of the day, it costs you. You can get you a lawyer. And the lawyer can get paid out of negotiating you a better deal. Like it don't take a lot. Like, it's not like you got to yeah, know legal jargon know yourself though. or understand this contract yourself. You should always reach but, out to an attorney because at the end of the day, the devil can offer you anything. And just because you're struggling, you might be put in a further hole than what you already in. Yeah. I mean, but that's, again, that just goes to education. You know what I'm saying? Because even, like, niggas don't even know how to get no entertainment lawyer. They don't have like, they Google. Don't Ain't no excuse in 2021, bro. I get it in the but 80s and the where, 90s. They don't know that. about going to entertainment lawyer. They just they might say law. You know what I'm saying? And then when you might, go to that lawyer, really the lawyer going to say, I don't have expertise in that. Or they going to have enough expertise to at least look at it and try to get you a better deal. I feel like yeah, it's no I mean, excuse in 2021. Again, you gotta, You got to remember that people don't. Like a lot of people don't have resources in terms of even getting to that thought process. Like people, like especially young black rappers. What are you rapping shit, about you know then? If you don't have enough intelligence to put words together, why can't you Google? I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I understand being I mean, thirsty and know. being hungry and wanting the first thing coming, and but you gotta, just don't give you gotta, fuck. you gotta own that. You gotta own the fact that you fucked up and yeah. you in a worse I mean, position you gotta, than you yeah. were before because now you owe them money. You work and then you ain't making no money. You got a fucking geo tracker or whatever them cars, uh, fucking, uh, TLC got. Like, you fucking multi-platinum and you got a fucking Amigo or a tracker or whatever that fucking car was that I, I wanted one of those back in the day, FYI. Uh, they were colorful and looked like a fucking matchbox car. Um. Damn. But yeah, in 2021, that that I just feel like that 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 shouldn't be a thing. But I definitely feel like um we definitely need to have health insurance. We need to have education on finance, and we we have to have some type of facility or something something where we can treat drug and substance abuse because drug and substance abuse is rapid. Period. But it's definitely rapid in the hip hop community because they're advertising it and thinking that it's cool. And you got motherfuckers literally dying and passing out due to this shit. Unfortunately, I knew DMX time was up. You can only do but so much damage to your body. DMX been doing this since he was 14 years old. Eventually the body gives up. You know what I'm saying? Eventually the body gives up and it may not have been nothing that we could do for, 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 for DMX. But, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, as a hip hop community, like, niggas need to be trying to make niggas better than buddy up with niggas even when they, you know what I'm saying? They doing bad. Fucking DMX that had some fucking stories. Like, when the DMX story come out, that shit gonna be crazy because I think about the time when he fucking impersonated a cop. You remember that shit? Oh yeah. DMX got some fucking stories. I know that nigga got some fucking stories. Rest in peace to DMX, man. Rest in peace. Rest in peace peace to DMX. Rest in peace to Black Rob. Rest in peace to Shock G. And, you know, rest in peace to Cam Kohari and all of the other individuals, uh, who have lost their lives recently. It's unfortunate. And, you know, We just got to step up and understand that everything ain't just fun. Everything ain't just for a look. It's people out here really fucking hurting. And you can be rich and hurting. (laughs) That's what people don't understand. They think money solves everything. But for a lot of these people, money is the root of the evil. Money is the root of the problem. You know? Mm -hmm. But, listen, I want to thank y'all for listening. Uh, We'll see y'all in, or you'll hear from us in, in, in two weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the show, man. And you can check us out on our website, uh, theaintshitshow.com. And that's the X where the I would be. And, you know, you can, we're on all the social, Twitter, IG, all of that. Uh, so check us out. Uh, and you know, I like to end each show with a quote. And today's quote is from 
somebody we mentioned earlier, Tamika Mallory. And her the quote is, we don't need allies, we need accomplices. And until next time, I want y'all to get vaccinated if you are, or wear a mask, wash your hands, manifest your destiny, and the marathon continues. Be out.